Hi there, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be with you in person to give you congratulations and a handshake and a warm hug uh, to send you off on your way at this wonderful graduation day. Um, it's been a huge honour and a great pleasure uh, to be a small part of the journey that you've all made over these past months and years. Um, I hope that you found the time that we spent together to be enjoyable, uh, maybe hopefully a little bit educational. Um, and certainly for me, it's always a pleasure to get to know you as students and to get to know you as people and to see you move along this journey, um, which I think is so important. Um, I have no doubt at all that you will all find enormous success in the future. I think one of the messages I really wanted to communicate during our course was that the, the way that we define success is changing in this world. Um, and most of all, what I feel is really important is success for me and I hope um, for you is not just financial or business success, but success as people and success in the impact that we make in people's lives. Uh, the world needs to change. Um, I'm optimistic and proud uh, to have met a bunch of people who I think are going to be at the vanguard of that change. I wish you all the best. Uh, please keep in touch. You know how to find me and um, see you around. Ian is one of our teachers that is here at High Tech Entrepreneurship Program. And all of this, of course, wouldn't be possible without our founder and CEO. So I would like to put our hands together one more time for Svetlana over here, right up front. We will have a few more videos throughout the day, but now it is time for our very first presentation, which is a very particular one by two of our finest students that are going to present their project. And they are really dear friends of us that have spent a lot of time. Our two amazing students, Giovanna and Narissa. So good afternoon, thank you all for being here. And my name is Giovanna, I'm from Mexico, and my co-founder is Narisa, she's from Thailand. And we're going to tell you the story about Yes Chef. Okay, so Yes Chef started because Nari and I became friends because we love food and we search for places to go and eat. So one day, we were at our favorite restaurant called Mongolons, and we decided to start talking with the chef of this place because we, we were very curious about how it is to work in a restaurant. And that's how we met Alberto. And Alberto was not only the, the, the chef that cooked for us delicious food, he was also the owner of this place. And we find out that he took from five to seven hours just to check his inventory in a weekly basis. And that's how Nari and I hop on into a new adventure that was helping Alberto to streamline their processes and be more efficient. And we built Yes Chef. With Yes Chef, Alberto only needs to upload his recipes. And uh, with this, by this, he's gonna have an ingredient list that will become his inventory management system. And then we will sync it to his POS. And with that, we're going to be able, with every sale he makes, just to estimate how many ingredients he's gonna consume on a daily basis. And this way, we're gonna help Alberto to streamline their processes and their operations. Thanks, Giovanna, for walking us through the life of Alberto's So apparently, Alberto is not the only one who facing these problems. We talked to 20 other restaurants in Barcelona. We found out that 70% of these restaurants are facing exact same issues as Alberto's, running a messy inventories, taking a lot of times dealing with it. So we think this is a market opportunity, that if we can grow from Barcelona to European market, where there are almost one million restaurants in this area. 
In the next three years, we want to target 1% of this market, which will return us to 5 million euros annually. Just to tell you about it, this is an underserved market where the current point of sale system are not able to convert their existing customers to use the extended features in particular of inventories management system. Our direct competitors are way too expensive for local restaurants like Alberto's and his peers. Their price are ranging from 100 euros to 200 euros on a monthly subscriptions. However, with Yes Chef, we want to create a simpler versions of inventory management system to help Alberto's and his peers with the affordable price of 440 euros on a monthly subscriptions basis. To achieve this, we already partnered with Alberto's, who has a lifetime experience in running a restaurant. And myself, I experience supervised hotels back of house with three restaurants outlets in the hotel. And my lovely co-founder, Joanna, she is a design expert. She has 10 years product designs in platform services. Thank you, Nari. But we are not only going to achieve this with this amazing team. We are also partner up with Harvard Space University and Madrid Food Innovation Hub. And this will allow us not only to help Alberto, but to tackle another global issue, that is food waste. And food waste is responsible about the 10% of the global carbon, carbon emissions. With Jess Chef, we, all, we want to help Alberto save time and improve his, their profits by reducing food waste. So my dear friends, families, investors, or anyone that's sitting here, we want to create this Yes Chef with Alberto's and two other restaurants that we already in contact with. So we are looking for 50,000 euros <laughs> to help us make it happen. If this is something resonate with you, please connect with us to know about to know more about Yes Chef, about myself, about Giovanna, or even to meet Alberto's, our lovely chef. By the way, he makes the best pizza in Barcelona. <laughs> we can give you also the gastronomy tips in Barcelona because we know that we all love food. And this has come to the end. This is Yes Chef. We want to improve life of restaurants people and drive food sustainability. Thank you. So who's got 50,000 ready? You didn't realize we we're gonna ask for money, did you? <laughs> Okay, back there. You have investors already. <laughs> that was the first one, and you see that's going to be our spirit for today. We want to show you what they worked on, we want to celebrate it, and we go straight to the next one. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about our next presenter, because she is really quite a character. And now here is what happens at the beginning of the year from our side, the people working at Harbor Space. We can tell usually straight away from the beginning, like, okay, so who is going to be the very active people who are going to be a bit more relaxed? Who is going to be the lazy ones? Who do we need to keep an eye on? And I tell you without jokes, she was the person where I knew from day one that she's going to succeed without any doubt. Please give it up for Susanna. Thank you so much, Amir. I'm very emotional, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> I love you as well. <laughs> well, as you already know, my name is Susanna and I am a performance marketer. Basically, I build strategies, I optimize campaigns, and I deliver results. But 
Um, it's not the scroll. It's going gonna, it's gonna to come a little bit pieces by pieces. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. That's me. <laughs> so basically, I realized that I am a performance marketer going through my day. From the beginning of my day, since the last thing I do, I optimize everything. While I'm making my coffee, I'm brushing my teeth at the same time, organizing my backpack, putting everything on the best feet possible, finding the fastest route to arrive to my destination. Basically, this is performance. <laughs> so, I decided to sell myself in this amazing portfolio. And here, as you can see on my portfolio, let's start with about me. I've been working with digital marketing eight years now. <laughs> and after eight years, I decided to do a master's degree in digital marketing and see what's out there in education and innovation regarding digital marketing. So that's why I'm here at Harbor Space, finalizing this cycle. Um, I worked in real estate, um, national real estate in Brazil, um, developing landing pages, um, generating leads, um, helping the sales. I also work at social media manager. Actually, this was my first internship eight years ago. <laughs> and here on my portfolio, you will be able to see every job that I have. Beautiful Susanna, I love her. <laughs> so every job that I have done, you're gonna be able to see here and read more and go to the description. See? And then also I have here all my projects that I developed throughout these eight years in digital marketing, social media, um, paid search campaign. And I also have a blog. Oh. How can I go back now? I also have a blog in which I developed my case studies, but also content regarding digital marketing for early startup founders. So for all my colleagues who are founding startups now and you want tips on digital marketing, on how to start your SEO strategy, your performance marketing strategy, well, please be my guest, read my case studies and my blog, I can help you. <laughs> And finally, one of the projects that I am most proud of, it's a paid search campaign that I did for my last job, an internship that I uh, could manage to find through Harbor Space in a travel app company called Be There. And basically, on this case study, I develop all the I found the challenge, what are their goals, what would be the perfect key words so I can use to beat on them. I did this campaign in Spanish and in English, and that's a challenge for me because I'm learning Spanish just now. <laughs> and after we ran the campaign through um, Google Ads, after a week, I realized the numbers, the conversion rates, and I see where we could improve. I added more um, keywords to the campaign. I built a specific landing page for Barcelona travelers so the conversion rate would go, um, would improve. So I'm gonna go through here so you can see a little bit. So increased traffic, it was the main goal of the campaign to the website. This is how uh, organized um, in a spreadsheet. <laughs> I organized the keywords and we selected the keywords based on the monthly search volume, but also on the average um, CPC of the keyword to be the most efficient ones, of course. <laughs> and these are the English keywords selected for the first draft of the campaign. I also have here the Spanish keywords these are how the ads um, looked like on, on the app, on the desktop, when you search for those specific keywords, such as what to do in Barcelona. 
Um, this is a little bit of what I did regarding the landing page. Um, so it would have, the campaign would have the same message throughout the campaign from the keyword, from the headline, until the landing page. So we develop blogs, we change the mockups to look like Barcelona. And these are the actions that I did to optimize the campaign. So um, we run ads with a broader audience. We create a different ad set with different headlines to see if it would be more attractive. We increase the numbers of keywords. We phrase match the keywords and we dedicated a landing page, exclusive landing page, and we also excluded a uh, age group. And that's it for this project. I would like to end my presentation here today with a phrase in Portuguese, because my mom doesn't understand English. <laughs> so, família, eu sou mestranda em marketing digital. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, we have tissues prepared as well, okay? <laughs> next up, <clears throat> next up, we have portfolios not just by marketing students, but also by design students. Because at the end of the day, that is where you highlight some of your most important works that you have worked on. No matter at what time, no matter what you focus on. And especially for our designers, very often that's a piece of art that they invest so many hours, sleepless nights into. Next up, we have a student that has been with us for three years and is now actually finalizing his bachelor degree. He has been here longer than some of our staff members and with him actually graduating, it feels and like an actual milestone of this university. Yegor, stage is yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Very, very important moment, huh? It's been three years. All right, let's go. Um, so my name is Igor, and I am finishing, well, I have finished my interaction design program. Um, and I am an interaction designer, but I also enjoy coding. Um, I know front end, and that's why this is my portfolio, and this thing moves around, and it looks kind of cool. I think so, at least. Um, it's a little laggy on the print, on the stream, but that's all right. Um, so yeah, this is what I position myself. I position myself as a creative technologist and interaction designer. Um, but that's that's the cool stuff to make the portfolio memorable. Um, and then I have the oh, it's scrolling the other way. I have the three projects that I did, two of them are installations, and one of them is um, branding, more traditional design. And then I have a little section called Cool Stuff, which I'll show a bit later. Um, I have, this project was also an installation that we actually managed to build here in Harbor Space one year ago. Um, it was pretty cool. Um, then this project we finished a couple of weeks ago with um, Anton from Anton and Irene. And the last one is the project we did with Diego Marini um, for branding. Now the, the cool stuff, cool stuff is a section I created just because I enjoy coding, right? And in creative coding, mostly you do simple sketches and they're not really tied to a single project. So here where I keep all the things that look cool, but they, they just look cool. That's that's about it. Um, can I move? Yes. Um, so they're not tied to a project, um, but still I want to show off some of the skills and all of those are made in code and then drawn, which is cool stuff. Um, yes, and then I have my um, my contact where you can reach out um, but the, for the case study that I want to show is this one, the TMB project that we did with um, Aslan, Adrian, and George, um, my teammates. And basically what we wanted to do is imagine what can we... Uh, is it still lagging? Oh. 
have it here. Your screen sharing is paused. What does that mean? Um, can I please? All right, now it should be working. Um, again, uh, TMB project is the project we did for the TMB company, which runs Metro and, and all the transportation in Barcelona. And basically, we were trying to imagine what we could do um, inside of Metro, which would be just cool. Um, and yes, we did it with Aslan, Adrian, and George, my teammates. Um, and there's a little bit of a lead in. This is a very, quite long of, um, um, of a case study. Wow, that, that looks very pixelated, but you know, that's what we have. Um, it's a very long case study, so I'm not gonna go through everything, but I will kind of rush through it. Um, so we came up with this huge installation, huge screen all along the metro station. Um, and I was coding the uh, so-called particle system um, that would be displayed on there. Um, wonder if this thing would work. Well, yeah, you can kind of see what it would do, and you would control all of this movement with the UI on your phone. Um, and this was basically the idea, just to entertain people while they're waiting for um, for their metro. Yes, and we designed the app and the visuals for the actual um, installation. Um, yeah, this really, okay. Mm -hmm. It was fine before, but all right. Oh well, um, working with what we have here. Um, and these were the final mockups of the installation. Maybe if I leave it for a bit, it will run there better. But uh, this was the main idea uh, for the project, and I think it was it was a, a passion project essentially um, to show off our both design skills and the um, coding and prototyping skills. So this was it. Uh, this was the the case study, and then I also. I don't want to leave you there. There is um, um, a little section to, you know, show you the next project if you want to. And then again, I have the footer where you can um, reach out to me. So if if you want to check this out on your laptop, well, when it's not lagging or pixelating, you know, the the URL is quite simple. It's my name, Igor dot World. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your patience and. Thank you. Jaeger, we all wish you all the best for your future. And uh, let's see in which design agency he's going to end up. Now we're going to switch gears a little bit. We are going to go to one of our marketing students. And Mizuki has been the kind of person that unfortunately I didn't get to see as much because we have sometimes schedules that don't overlap with particular classes. And then only towards the end, I got to see her amazing work actually that she has been working on. And that's why even I am super, super excited right now to see her project Amarante. Please give it up for Mizuki. from digital marketing, so let's go. <laughs> I love vintage fashion. I can say 70% of my closet is vintage clothing. I buy them from some physical vintage stores or some applications, such as Depop. 
I follow their Instagram account because their account is so pretty and beautiful, so I love it. But once I get onto their app, they're full of overwhelming amount of items. Their photos are not clear and they don't represent the quality of their items. It's hard to decide what to buy. Also, I've tried to sell my clothes, but first of all, I don't know the best way to sell. Should I wear this item and take a photo or just take a photo of this item? I'm not sure which is better. I've got some inappropriate insulting messages from strange people, so I guess their customer service is not working properly. Overall, I don't like this environment. I just want to enjoy, sell, and buy cool vintage clothing in a comfortable environment. That's why we create a new type of marketplace, which is members-only community-based marketplace just for lovers of second-hand clothing. With curated vintage or one-of-a-kind items, with trusted people in a safe and warm environment. Before I get into the details, let me explain what is happening in fashion industry. Those brands look familiar to almost everyone, I guess. Um, they are fast fashion brands. They make us possible to access to a wide range of styles with surprisingly affordable prices. And it sounds perfect, right? So we loved it so much. And I was one of them. I enjoyed so many shoppings from fast fashion brands. But that's in the past, not anymore. Because they caused so many serious issues, such as polluting our planet, yes, and exploiting their workers, it even changed our shopping behavior. But we, Generation Z and Millennials, are already aware of those facts, and we are willing to change them. That's why we've already used some applications or websites for second-hand items. However, a lot of people that I talk to are not satisfied with the reason that I mentioned earlier. So here's how we make it different. As I said, our marketplace is members-only community. Therefore, we're installing an invitation system. Our goal is to make not only a place people can sell and buy items, but also a place people can interact with each other, such as providing styling advice to each other and then collaborating, or connecting other members in a real life. We also encourage their good behavior by giving some incentives to those who contributed to make our community a better place. By creating this environment, our members can trust each other and feel deep and strong connection. Our revenue stream. We take fees from sellers and buyers equally. Since we are a community, we make it fair. We take 6% of each sales by sellers, 6% of each, sell, each purchases by buyers. We also have a plan for the future. We will partner with small-scale brands to put their stores on our marketplace so that we take 15% of their sales as a commission fee. Where do we start? We will start by creating a WhatsApp group just for lovers of second-hand clothing. We offer a place to interact with each other so that we can test and understand what they behave and what they value. So that we can um, decide which features should be focused when we create a marketplace. To create this WhatsApp group, I have a, we have a big announcement. So this is our first and special event. It's happening next Tuesday. Um, you can shop, sell, and swap second-hand items. It's happening Tuesday, next Tuesday from 6 to 9. If you're interested, scan the score. The old information is there. 
Um, also, Tamala is helping me as well. So come and enjoy uh, or just support us, please. <laughs> and yeah, so this is Avalante. And let, let me explain a, oh. let me explain a, our name. So it's inspired by two Latin words, to love and past, meaning to love something from the past in the present. This is our team, me and Miguel over there. And he's an amazing designer and we are so passionate about this project. And I want to also say thank you to everyone who involved our project. I was able to improve my idea every module and I'm presenting it today. And I'm so grateful that I came here and learned so many things and met amazing people. So thank you so much. Have a space. <laughs> thank you. And this is how projects become real. They work on it during the times here at Harvest Base, and on Tuesday, go check it out. It is now in real life. So, next up, we are switching gears one more time. It is time for our first tech presenter. And sometimes our tech students are maybe a little bit more shy and they are a little bit more in the background delivering great quality, great work, but they don't enjoy the stage as much as the others. And that's why we are very, very happy that Matthias today decided, yes, I am going to show what I've worked on. <laughs> Come on stage, it is time for you. Steph, wait a second, I can see those, uh, yeah, good, good, now it's good. Okay, well, hello everyone, my name is Matthias, uh, I'm not shy, at least according to myself, <laughs> but um, my capstone has been around a technology called Kubernetes, and more specifically, uh, it's a guide for Kubernetes, and I know what most of you are thinking. What is it? And it's a bit slow. <laughs> it should be this one, yeah. Okay. What is Kubernetes? Imagine an octopus. An octopus with a lot of arms. And you can use all of these arms to run your websites or backend servers or programs. And these arms can also do a lot of other things. But, but, <laughs> <laughs> Kubernetes by itself is not enough if you want to use it in production, serving critical applications. Um, and that you can see here, the octopus will cry in a bit there. Um, and that is because Kubernetes needs something more and it needs some armor. And what I need, mean by armor is that it needs extra tools. And that is because Kubernetes, by definition, is pluggable. It has some intentional gaps that you are meant to fill out as a developer. And this is really, really hard because there are so many tools to choose from. And it's really, really hard to figure out which one is the right one for me because there are a lot of aspects to consider. And it's not only me. Like, when you go on the web, you can find numerous articles discussing the complexity of Kubernetes, uh, as you can see here. Um, so my goal, my goal is to help engineers decide better which tools to choose for Kubernetes pluggable gaps, like 
security and observability. And my proposal looks like this. It's a website and in the beginning you answer some questions about what type of user are you? And then you get to explore the different gaps that like I talked about. Then you can choose your final tools and then you can export as PDF and bring it to your coworkers and discuss further. And instead of talking about it, I just want to show you what I did. Okay. And it's a bit slow. Okay, so in the beginning, you answer some questions. And I'm just gonna go a bit quick through this. But the website will get to know you. It will save all of this in, in state. Uh, it will, so it will get to know you. And we are just gonna choose some random things here. And then these, all these blue things here, these are all the gaps in Kubernetes. And the idea is that as a user, you can explore them. You can click on one, and it's really slow. And then the idea is that you can see the tools that you can use for this particular gap. And you can click on it, and you can also learn more. And as you click on them, you can see out here to the left, there, uh, that all these tools, you save them, and the website will know this. So let's choose some more. We're just gonna choose this. You can, yeah, of course, learn more, pros and cons. You can see what you want. One more. And then in the end, okay, I'm done. Export to PDF. Boom. And then you have a PDF showing your chosen tools, also showing pros and cons for each, and you can bring this along to your next meeting discussing these kind of tools. And that's it from me and Happy. From me and Happy. <laughs> Design, entrepreneurship, and technology. That is what our university focuses on, and that is what we want to show you and highlight today in all the variety of the projects. Now, we go back to the design portfolios, and the next person has a very different style, as you will see. You have already witnessed one other design portfolio. We will see a few more. This is not so much about a competition. This is about what do you define as your particular style through your studies as there are many different directions you can go. Please give it up for Aslan. Hello, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to be presenting my um, UX portfolio, um, my UX um, portfolio website. And, um, but first, a little bit about myself. Um, my background is in social sciences originally, and later on I moved on to, after graduating, to um, software development, and um, having worked a little bit as a developer, I found out about design, UX, UI, and um, I realized that it's a perfect combination of my already existing background in social sciences research, and so this is kind of the culmination and the combination of everything here. Um, so on the website, as you can see, um, the first thing that I show is the um, my latest case study, um, which I will walk through. Um, I have my articles. So I do also write um, occasionally um, when I am inspired or int intrigued by a certain topic in design. Um, and you can see my article page here. See it loads. Um, have a featured article. This is the latest one I wrote. Um, this one is actually interestingly. Um, I was only able to finish this. Took me a couple of months to finish this because of a, a professor here in Harbor Space, um, Gary. Um, his class and his uh, amazing insights actually allowed me to find finally finish this article. Um, Let's go into the project page. So I have two more projects here that I've also, this one I've done before I joined Harbor Space, um, and this one actually during my um, time here. 
because uh, it's, uh, I, I need to slow down a bit. <laughs> Yeah, because I need to watch the presentation. All right, let's hope this loads. All right. So this project actually also I did during my time in Harvest Space. Um, this one is about tattoos. Um, and um, it's an app to help people get tattoos. Um, this project actually is something that I've been kind of working on for few months or quite a while um, and here I kind of was able to finalize it and put it into a UX case study um, and it's a passion project basically um, but um, the, the the way it works basically is simple it's um, if you, you come up with a, a tattoo idea usually it's, it's, it's mainly for people who are um, who have difficulties coming up with tattoos. People have never gotten a tattoo before. That's kind of the issue that I um, decided to solve here. Um, and um, people come up with a tattoo, you find an artist, you schedule a session, and you can also get some tips from the blog. Um, that's basically how it works. And um, this is how I uh, tackled the problem. I interviewed around 15 to 20 people around here. and. Um, have our personas, um, yeah, coming up with solutions, all of these methodologies I was able to, I, I learned in class actually, and I'm still using them today in all of my projects. It's incredibly useful stuff, the um, BJ Falk behavioral modification model, um, um, some sketches that I've done, and the user flows and the final wireframes. It's a UX case study, so nothing too uh, beautiful UI. Um, and finally, the um, uh, call to action to get in touch with me. And that's about it. Thank you. Next up is something very, very different. Now let me tell you about the guy who's coming up stage because it, it took a while until we actually got to see him. It took a while until he actually was able to join us on campus and he is one of the most beautiful examples of how he tried and worked very hard to make it happen so he doesn't have to be an online student anymore. Manu, it's a great pleasure. Show us what you got. Thank you. Hello everyone. You guys are a beautiful crowd. <laughs> um, so, oh. yeah. Hi everyone. My name is Manu Chimsoapara, but you could call me Manu, and I'm the CEO and founder of Urban Stones Jewelry, a high-end jewelry manufacturer and soon to be a subsidiary of Opara Luxury. Uh, let me give you a little bit of backstory about myself. I'm from a small town in the south part of Nigeria called Port Harcourt. And we're really only known for two things, our oil pollution, our oil production and our air pollution. And it's clear to see that these two things go hand in hand. In fact, our pollution is so bad that there are physical deposits of black soot that develop in the morning. It's clear to see that this has become the status quo all across the entirety of Africa, where Hundreds of cities just like mine have been plagued by blessings of natural resources which have turned into curses of pollution and exploitation. And so this is what I would like to change and I've spent the last two years de de um, developing the new luxury business model. So this business model 
is based off of subverting the idea that Africa is not more than an impoverished well of natural resources. What this business model means is at every step of the way for the creation of each piece of jewelry, I will be in charge of getting the gems from the ground, getting the gemstones polished, mining the materials, setting and creating the final piece of jewelry. In fact, those are my hands, you can see, doing all of that fancy work over there. <laughs> um, so, it's very important for us to work with family-owned mines and family-owned gem cutters. This is because we can give back directly to the villages that we work from. So what are our products, you might be asking? So we make a wide variety of products, mostly jewelry pieces, mostly custom pieces. These are designed with high, high precision engineering CAM and CAD software. This is to increase the final quality, reduce the, um, increase the efficiency, reduce waste, and increase the final price of the product. We then pass down our increased prices and profits back to the villages that we work with in the form of philanthropic projects such as building water supplies and building educational systems for these villages. Um, so the market for jewelry. It is currently at $250 billion in global um, watch and jewelry revenue. This is going to grow to $330 billion by 2026. And less than 1% of that revenue is generated in Africa, the continent where the majority of the um, resources come from. The median age in Africa is also only 19.5 years old. This means Africa is not just a well of natural resources, but we've got millions and millions of young minds that are ready and primed to be connected to the rest of the world. And how are we going to connect them? Well, the revenue of the online jewelry market is going to be 19 billion by 2024. And this is the key to our business model. We are connecting the rest of the world to Africa using jewelry and online platforms. Our revenue model is simple. We've got a B2B and a B2C model. The B2C is straightforward. We sell jewelry directly to our customers through our online store. Our B2B model, we've actually just developed after taking a very nice class with Olaf. So we will be supplying diamonds and golds to jewelry centers around the world. And we'll be making sure that these are sourced from ethical mines and above ground mining solutions. We've got a competitive edge in that we've been operating for the last two years already. We've been seeing our profits and our revenues grow. Actually, our year-on-year -year profits are growing by 100%, and our profit margins are growing within that as well. We have a website that takes all of our orders. It handles our custom jobs, and it handles um, all your payments through secure platforms. And we've been doing a lot of marketing, a lot of um, industry marketing. And recently, we've been featured in Vogue magazine, and we're going to be doing... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So we're going to be in Vogue magazine for three months in Tatler, Vanity Fair, and as of last week, GQ as well. So all of these are going to be out within the next couple of months. So, um, so a big milestone for us for next year is uh, the development of our watchmaking division. So we're going to be creating a watchmaking division partnered up with Schwarz Etienne, which is a Swiss watchmaking company with over 120 years of experience. And another big milestone for us is that we are creating a factory back home in Nigeria, and this factory will lead all our production and eventually lead into our watchmaking division. Uh, thank you guys for your time. And money. Thank you. It's great to have you here also finally on a graduation day. That is, that is big. We don't want to miss that, not without you. So, next up, now that we reached halfway point, more or less, we want to throw in a couple of more words from one of our teachers, Stephanie Schwarm, who is the program director of our digital marketing program. Because that is one of our key programs that we have offered here at this university. You see some of the projects already today that are part of this. And she has something for us ready. Let's play it. Congratulations and well done to all the students graduating from the digital marketing program. Jordan, Laura, Tarek, Lucas, Mehdi, Mizuki, Nicholas, Pedro, and Susanna. And to all of the students graduating today, you are taking a huge step into your purpose, your vision, and your new reality. Really, your biggest step was in choosing to come to Harbor Space in the first place. You took a leap. 
you went on an adventure, most of you moved to Barcelona, and you took a big risk. And you did it in the middle of a global pandemic. Along the way, you and your classmates have explored widely, learned deeply, and questioned everything in digital marketing and in business. You did creative work. You wrote blog posts, created ads, and directed videos. You did analytic work, Facebook ads, Google Analytics, search engine optimization. You created countless social media handles, many of them now abandoned. You developed goals, objectives, strategy, and tactics. You learned that PESO is not only a country in Mexico, it also represents a key concept in marketing, paid, earned, shared, and owned, and that tofu is not only a food, it's the top of the marketing funnel. Many of you became experts in PowerPoint, Google Slides, and Canva along the way, as you realized that good marketing requires good visuals. And you danced every day in my classes, bringing more blood to your brains so you could absorb all of the knowledge more deeply. You gave your education everything you've got. I had the pleasure of having every one of you in my classes, some of you more than once, and I've been so impressed by your work, by your growth, and by your maturity. I know you've each got what it takes to be successful in the world. Whether or not you're doing it as a marketer, you know how to think on your feet, present your ideas, and leverage your expertise. I am so excited for this next step in your careers and your lives. It's been my honor to be your teacher and your mentor, and I can't wait to see what you all do next. I celebrate you all. Congratulations. Stephanie is one of our teachers, and you have seen Ian before as well, but there is many, many more. And to give you some insights about how our university is structured for those that haven't been familiarized with it yet. We don't really teach in semesters or trimesters. We always teach in three-week modules. That means we have every student coming to campus for three hours minimum every day, and then they really have an intense learning experience with this one professor that teaches and also works at the same time. That is what we really care for here. Some of the values that we represent is that we want to translate practical knowledge. And Svetlana's idea in the first place was to have something more hands-on, something that you can learn from the people actually practicing what they preach. Now, I personally also studied here at this university. I actually graduated last year. Interaction design was my program as well. I'm not going to show you my portfolio today. I don't think it's worthy enough compared to what you've seen so far and will see afterwards. But it definitely has changed my life. And I think that is something that all graduates always have in common. They come here and they say, Harbor Space changed them in ways which they didn't really expect. Sometimes they come in the first place and they feel like, OK, what is happening here? They don't really know yet, and then step by step, they get more familiar with our procedures. And that's why it's really, really good to see you now, after one full year of being here. I really, I really mean it when I say that time flew by. 15 modules, 15 times three, and towards the end, everyone got a little bit tired, and that's natural. I remember my time last year as well. That's how it usually goes. And I think for the future, keep that in mind, that is how it's probably going to be as well. Keep that mindset up. Keep it in a very intense but also joyful way. At the end of the day, celebration is very, very important as well. And so from a very personal point of view, I just want to tell you that I wish you all, no matter what direction you end up going, a really, really, really great success professional and a lot of joy personally. It's been incredible to spend these 12 months with you. And I can't wait to celebrate tonight, guys. <laughs> so we continue with one of our presentations, and that is going to be from one of our digital marketing portfolios. Somebody who has actually brought a lot of joy to this campus. And I think without you, it wouldn't have been the same over the 12 months. And no matter if it was downstairs in front of the building, always seeing it with a smile and a cigarette in your hands, no matter if it was coming 15 minutes late to classes almost every day, or if it is actually presenting at the end of the class an amazing 
project. And I have seen some of that throughout the year, and I'm happy to see it right now again. Please give it up for Pedro. Okay, maybe we'll give it one more minute before we actually start. What would be technology without its downsides, without its hiccups? Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Pedro Arias, and I'm a digital marketing master's graduate. And I would like to start my presentation today with a big thanks to all the Harbor Space community, the teachers, the facu uh, faculty members, the staff, students. It has definitely been a, a challenging but rewarding ride. And I'm th super thankful for everything I've learned here. So going back to my, to my capstone project, I have decided to create a portfolio to showcase my skills throughout the years in the digital marketing industry. Uh, and hopefully it will also have two other secondary uh, objectives will, which I will detail in a bit. So the first thing I, I did was to select my web hosting service provider, which was Wix, since I'm not a designer and I'm not a programmer, this was my go-to. And then after purchasing the domain and getting the SSL certificate, I went ahead and integrated Google Analytics, which uh, some why it's not working right now, the extension. But yeah, uh, I integrated Google Analytics, uh, Analytics 4, also Google Tag Manager, and started mapping out the events uh, that I wanted to track in my website, since I already had a basic structure of how it would look like. And I remember that at the time we were having the paid social class, so I went ahead and I also installed the Facebook Pixel, just in case I want to do some uh, paid campaigns in the future to advertise my, my services. Um, after that, I went ahead and uh, gathered some reviews from past um, co-workers, classmates, students, uh, teachers, and also collaborate, collaborators. And if we scroll a little bit down, this will be the most important part of the portfolio, whereas the actual case studies, which I have the, divided them in four. Uh, I spent three years in Punta Mita, so I did different things. Over there, the first case study showcases more my social media marketing skills and some content creation that I've been doing uh, while I was there. And the second case study is more about the paid advertising and the lead generation campaigns that we created uh, throughout those three years. The third case study is more about um, my videography and photography skills, uh, also a little bit of editing and influencer marketing. I detail different, um, like different case studies or different collaborations I did. And the last one, you'll see it's blocked because um, it's my actual job right now and I cannot display the information, but I'm actually now the uh, user acquisition specialist for Timeling and also in charge of the CRM communications. If we keep on scrolling, scrolling down, we'll see some more social proof of brands I've collaborated with. And down at the bottom, a monthly newsletter, which uh, brings me back to my first point, since I, my, the objective of my portfolio is to start building a young community of marketers, hopefully, uh, where I will help them overcome common pitfalls that I went through uh, throughout the years. And I will come back to this one a little bit later. I will go real quick to the let's talk bottom, since this is the other objective of the portfolio, to hopefully start landing some potential clients in the future. Um, the About Me page just outlines a little bit about me, my hobbies, my past education. I can go down. Uh, sorry, sorry. And I will go real quick to the Punta Mita case study. I know I'm running out of time, so just want to showcase a little bit what's inside. Uh, basically, after three years being with them, we generated like 28 million organic impressions. Uh, more than 900,000 engagements and boosting social following plus 450% as well as the clicks. Uh, there's a contact me bottom over here which would take you to the Let's Talk page. 
And here I just display some, some information about Punta Mira, background information about myself, some videos I created during my stay there, the challenge, the main KPIs that we followed in order to measure success, a little bit about what the experience was and the strategy, how I built a content calendar for the different social medias, how we track all the efforts using Sprout Social, and different collaborations with celebrities, influencers that help us got these amazing results. Here's uh, Instagram, some uh, following that we improved. And I was also involved a little bit in the PR and SEO part. However, I decided to come to Harbor Space, so I couldn't deploy like a full stack strategy over there, but hopefully soon. Uh, and down at the bottom, you see the outcome, the team, and again, this brings me back to the newsletter where I have actually integrated with uh, MailChimp and I've created a super simple uh, email journey. So, uh, so if you wanna get some tools that I've been gathering throughout the past 10 years, please free, feel free to subscribe there. And I hope you have liked the portfolio. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, here we go. It is time for our first case study. And that is going to be presented by a gentleman who has been very, very close to me throughout almost the entire year. And that's why it's a special pleasure to bring him on stage right now. Somebody who has not just worked alongside me, who has also organized events, who has been part of the student committee, who has been a teaching assistant. If there is one prodigy who I would say is, is like a, the best example of what Harvest Space stands for, it is this young guy right here in front of me and he's going to tell us a little bit more about where he worked in the past and where he is actually still going to continue working and please put your hands together for Hisham. Thank you everyone. Perfect. Hi everyone, my name is Hisham Al-Hashmi and today I'm going to talk about my apprenticeship at Phasero and what I've been doing over the last 12 months. But first, let's start by explaining what Phasero is. So Phasero is a uh, startup tech company based in Oman, uh, currently operating in two countries, with 41 employees at Phasero. Specifically, we specialize in data science solutions. Um, so we coordinate with clients and we have an impressive list of clients uh, to unlock capital for them, to help them focus essentially on their core business while we take care of the um, nitty gritty of data science for them. Uh, so as you can see on the list, we have multiple clients ranging from oil and gas companies such as uh, Petroleum Development Oman, all the way to the state of Qatar and the uh, British Embassy in Muscat. We are able to do this with the help with our partners, and as you can see, we also have an impressive list of partners ranging from universities, such as Harbor Space, as well as UC Berkeley in the US, uh, Geotech in Oman. Um, we also have partners such as Microsoft and Google Cloud with whom we develop different solutions to serve our clients' needs. But after moving on from our list of clients and partners, what have I done at Phaser over the last 12 months? In short, I've done a lot. <laughs> there have been a lot of different projects that I was involved on, but today I decided just to focus on three main projects that show the wide um, range of solutions and projects that we work on at Phasero. So the first one that I actually started working on last August when I joined the company is a um, an platform for landowners to sell their lands. It's a, essentially an e-commerce platform. And one of the solutions, one of the features that I was uh, working on was to design a optical recognition tool that can scan this land document and out of that parse out the details about where the land is located. So this feature would actually help and streamline the process instead of having the um, user type in all the numbers, missing a decimal point, et cetera. After working with the, different, uh, with the data science team, we were able to achieve an accuracy of 95% with detection by stacking different models using different tools. One of them was through our partnership with Google, with Google Cloud. 
The second project that I worked on uh, actually happened last year around November, December time, which was a solution related to oil and gas uh, challenge where um, maintenance and maintenance of oil wells. So imagine this, you have, let's say, a thousand different wells, but only 10 different um, maintenance equipment. We, or the, the client rather, needed a solution that would optimize the allocation of these maintenance uh, equipment to the uh, oil wells. And so what I worked on with the team members at Phasero was design a web platform where it will take the data from different uh, data sources and within seconds analyze that data and provide a queue of which oil should be maintained first while optimizing oil gain and um, minimum movement of these equipment as per the client's request. One last project that I worked on over the last year was a partnership actually with UC Berkeley in the US um, where we wanted to start a conversation in the region of Middle East and North Africa of data science. It's a kind of brand new topic in that area and so we wanted to basically build up this community by inviting different speakers from all around the world to discuss their specific applications of data science in those, uh, in those specializations that they were doing. And uh, we managed to have multiple speakers within the span over um, six months, roughly, different speakers every couple of weeks or so. So throughout these projects that I've worked on at Phase Row and with the teachings that I've got at Harbor Space, I was able to build up my skills in more than one regard. First, with technical, working with computer vision, with project management, with, with optical recognition and machine learning in general. And then with soft skills, I was also able to work on team management, working with a team um, of diverse people from different parts of the world, also working remotely as well. Um, with, technic with presentation, with um, communication and technical writing were all of the skills that I feel have made me a more well-rounded employee in the future. Um, and for that, I'm very thankful for both Phasero and to Harbor Space. Thank you all. And some of you might not know, but Masood over there is actually part of the Facebook company as well. So we are very happy that he was able to join today. He did well, didn't he? Amazing. Next up, we continue with the design portfolio. And it is similar to Jaeger, somebody that is now actually wrapping up three years in progress. And Lynn over here has been one of the most gifted, one of the most talented, and also hardworking people, and I think her work will speak for herself. Lynn, the stage is yours. But you have to tell the story, how you ended up here. Oh my god, it's going to be too long for four <laughs> minutes. It's, yeah. So, um, hi everyone. Um, good afternoon. Um, yeah, so a little bit introduction about myself. My name is Lynn, I'm from Vietnam, very far away from here. And um, my background is in graphic design. Um, yeah, so because Svetlana wanted me to tell a little bit about my story. So basically, I kind of dropped out of my college back then. And for some reason, I end up here, a long story. But now I finished everything. And I'm very... Yes, um, yeah, and um, so today I'm going to present to you my portfolio after three years here. Um, so yeah, let me reload this because, uh, yeah, hi, hi everyone. <laughs> um, my portfolio is pretty straightforward. Um, I have a little introduction about myself and how to contact me. And uh, on the right-hand side, I have the project, my favorite project that I, hi I highlighted. And you can see some of them. OK, hi again. Um, some of them here. Um, this one is from Irene's class. This one is from uh, Anton's class. Um, and some other one. Ah, this one's from a uh, branding class from Diego, one of my favorite one. And if you want to see more of my work, 
you can go to this work tab where I have different projects that I will fill out the case study later. And um, you can filter it either in UX UI or in branding because that is the that are the two main uh, kind of projects that I work with. Um, and you can also go to the experiment tab where I basically put all of my visual experiment in here. Um, this video is actually one of the project from post class in hyperspace as well. Um, yeah, and um, I'm kind of like a pattern lover, so I have created a lot of patterns. I showed them here and some of the other projects here. So if you like it, please visit my portfolio and take a look at other projects. So now um, I want to show you one of my case study that I feel really proud of, which called Commons. Um, so yeah. Okay, let's wait for it a little bit. So Commons is an experience design project for a co-working space uh, in the context of after COVID pandemic. I created them with one of my classmates. And the reason why we decided to do this project is because we have another class um, about user, uh, user research. And we learn how people react with um, remote working all of a sudden in the middle of the pandemic. And uh, we learned that even though uh, people love the flexibility of remote working, they actually feel very um, difficult and they need a lot of effort to put into remote working because their lack of social connection as in the real uh, office environment. So that's why we uh, decided to go with this remote working concept that will make the um, remote working easier as well as like mimic the real social connection between uh, co-employee in the in in office. So uh, we have a um, mood board in what kind, of pro uh, what kind of space that we want in here. And uh, we have our principle that is applied for both our team uh, working together as well as uh, for the customer who come to us. They need to follow some of the principle. We also uh, generate the user journey as well as the service blueprint. So how it's going to work for different customer. Um, we have this uh, mood board for the app because the app is the main uh, component of this project. So uh, different uh, screen, like we have the check-in that people can use the card to uh, minimize the physical uh, interaction with the space. Uh, we have the home where we have the community update or the sticky note board as um, as a real a, a real um, space, we have the community update, and finally the kitchen. So yeah, um, a little bit of story after this project is that uh, actually one of my clients saw this project and they finally uh, reached out to me, and we are right now working on a co-working space back in Vietnam. And um, they said that, oh, I want exactly the same project that you are created. So yeah, that's a success story. Amazing. Really, really good stuff. Did you notice that not two presenters that we had so far were from the same country? The diversity that we have here at Harbor Space is incredible. And we continue in that way with one of my dearest friends from this year. I would say he has been one that is not just originally from a country very close to mine, which is Austria, and he's from Slovakia. We had a lot of in common, and I'm just super, super happy that he's presenting to you today. Please give it up for Robo.
Hello, everybody. I want to tell you a story about how I got here and how I created Chai. Nowadays, entrepreneurship has become a desired career path for many. We want to become the next Elon Musk, the next Steve Jobs or, Steven or Jeff Bezos. I was one of those people. I had dreams and ideas and passions to go pursue them. But where, back where I am from, which is Slovakia and Central and Eastern Europe, the concept of startups and entrepreneurship is fairly new. And five years ago, when I was working on my first project, I saw no other choice but to go abroad to do the project, just like many of my other Slovak peers did before me. And will have to continue to do so after me if there isn't a change. That is why we are creating Shire, the solution that many of us sought in the past. We want to become the European standard for entrepreneurial education and startup ecosystem. And we want to do this by lowering the entry barrier to becoming a startup founder. The problem that they are facing is quite simple. There is a lack of uh, startup and educational support for entrepreneurs who are going from zero to one. And with current economic crisis, which is going to bring more unemployment, more and more people are going to be looking towards entrepreneurial careers. So we asked ourselves, who are these people that we are going to be targeting? And we call them the nascent entrepreneurs, or in different meaning, the first-time founders. And we segmented them based on demographics, but more importantly, what we care about are the behavioral traits, because that's what makes an entrepreneur. We are looking for proactive researchers, people who are curious, and networkers. And we designed some marketing channels of how to get in touch with them. Now, the solution that we want to bring to them is quite simple. We want to improve the education and support system in Slovakia by designing a gamified digital incubator that will work as a venture tool for these first-time founders. We are going to be operating where I'm from, which is Slovakia and Central Eastern Europe. And in 2021, there have been almost 10 billion euros invested in almost 3,000 deals. And all of these 3,000 deals were done for first-time founders. There are also 1,500 angel investors and 250 VC funds that we are looking forward to working with. Now, let's talk about our product. It's an eight-week-long product. Uh, it's an eight-week-long program structured on, based on milestones that you have uh, your mentors and your peer, group, peer groups that are helping you go through it. As you can see here, there is a milestone called design thinking. So you enter where you left off. And you design your task and you upload it to update your uh, progress tracker. Once you finish it, we'll give you an overview of what you did, and you can download your pitch deck and use it to either edit or upload to or send it to your investors. Well, now our strategy is quite simple. We are doing a simple B two C strategy in the beginning, where we are not charging anything. We are just intaking the most quality startups that we can on cohort basis every month. And as we do that, we are going to pre be preparing them for a demo day, just like this one. And we are going to be taking 10% of any investment proceeds that we can generate for these startups. Also, we are going to be offering them some service offerings, thanks to our newly uh, found partners in Slovakia that we can uh, do this with. So it's going to be legal, accounting, and so on. And the B2B strategy is also very interesting, because once we found uh, some stability in this sector, we want to go to corporates and run different incubation programs there, just like hackathons are done nowadays. I want to thank my amazing team, <laughs> my lovely Tamara and Roger. Thank you very much. <laughs> I also want to thank everybody in the staff and all the students I got to work with because you guys pushed me to do this and bring it to the level where I can now go back home. I found investors and I found partners that I can do this with and my dream is becoming true. So thank you very much. You should say it yourself. I am becoming a CEO. <laughs> yes, what a success story. And it really was only finalized in the last few weeks, right? Yes, perfect. That's the perfect transition right there. 
So now we continue and we have a student coming up who is one of a kind. A uh, person that has been working with Harbor Space um, for, for many, many months now, and I would say without him, his outcome and this university wouldn't be where it is right now. Please put your hands together for the incredible Lucas. All right. Thank you, thank you. We will wait for technology to catch up with us. All right, so before I start this, I have to kind of give a little bit of background because one of the things that I love most about Harbor Space is the fact that they let you take creative liberties. And I love creative liberties. And so in the scheme of this whole thing, coming down to this capstone, there were a few options that we all had. And I decided to kind of pick and pull from a number of options to create what I wanted. Um, although I am doing a marketing portfolio on paper, it doesn't have my name on it. It is more of a startup uh, as I'm developing my own strategic marketing agency. It is also a portfolio. And then there is also a case study within it. So um, really, if you give me a little, give me an inch, I will take a mile. That's just how it works. But we can kind of start with this. So this is Stratmark, my strategic marketing agency, which is as of about a month ago, fully functioning and launched. And I've already been working with clients. Um, so similar to Susanna, I do specialize in performance marketing. So here we have my homepage. Oh, you have it reversed. I still can't get used to that. So really, and here's what I do best and what this agency is all about. Performance marketing, digital content, copywriting, and marketing strategy. So really, um, if you come in, we can, we'll go to those pages, but we have some social proof up here at the top. Um, really kind of about what my agency and what this agency is all about, research, strategy, growth, how we're going to walk through these processes with clients and really build the right solution for them. Then if we come down, I actually was already working with one of our old professors, Bianca, she taught a public speaking class here, and over the break, um, she actually hired Stratmark to build a email marketing system for a product that she is launching called Cherish One, which is going to be a dating app. And so we are already starting to see some growth here, which is exciting. Um, and then what I want to move into is the, one of the blogs that I wrote. And so this is, although the case study was an important part, really I poured my heart and soul into this um, marketing your business, the ultimate beginner's guide to growing your small business through digital marketing. I basically sat down and went through every class that we took this year, all 15 modules, and put them into, well, a 6,000 word um, guide that is covers basically the top probably 15 to 25 percent of every class that we took. I wanted anyone who had no experience in marketing to be able to come to this, read through it, see the graphics. I linked out to all the resources that I've ever found and were given to me by professors and really be able to walk away understanding the basics like finding customers and finding market fit and understanding what a marketing funnel is and then getting into more of the, you know, more complicated topics like what is paid marketing? How many different types of paid marketing are there? Um, and then being able to get down to the bottom and understand that like, hey, it's not just about having a website. You should have landing pages and email and there's so many complicated things that have to do with marketing. Um, and so that was really the point of this and this is what I really wanted to present today. But I will go and do one final thing within here. So there is an about page. We'll kind of run here really quick. And I did steal a couple of my, my classmates' photos so I didn't have to use stock. Um, all approved, but eventually when the, when the company grows, we will we'll put, um, but they are great figure holds um, at this point. And just a little bit about Stratmark and how it started and uh, the background that I have working in hotels and working for Harbor Space and working for small businesses and just how really I wanted to pour it all in to this project. And then just a couple of projects that we did and I will show, pull up the Leagues of Code. Um, at the beginning of the year, Leagues of Code, which is a partner product with Harbor Space, a really great product that teaches um, children how to code. Uh, they needed a marketing plan, and so they came to the university and decided to host a hackathon. And so for 36 hours, me and Susanna, who, who, who left, but we were locked in a room together, and we built this strategic marketing plan 
four leagues of code that covers everything from what the goals that they set out for in their brief, all the way down to creating buyer personas, looking at competition, and then breaking it into what part of the funnels they should be using, I mean, what marketing tactics they should be using and what part of the funnel, how that should work, how we're going to capture these milestones with KPI, I mean, these KPIs, and then we even went into TikTok influencer campaigns, and really we built an entire strategy around it. And, you know, it all culminates in hoping that someone gets to this page and we'll fill this out and work. And it really has been such an amazing experience. And this was really the ultimate goal after, you know, being a professional in the marketing world for five, six years and then coming back to get my degree and my master's here. Um, I kind of made a promise to myself that I, if I was going to work for anyone, I wanted to work for myself. Um, and yeah, and the people in this room is really what made this happen. So thank you very much. Coming up next, we have another team project, and that is the combination of two people that have worked either right over there in our office at Harvest Base or right over there in the office of One Rec Time. We have a data scientist and we have a front end student coming together, and that was an incredible moment when they said, you know what, we have an idea for an app. We're like, hmm, okay, really, that's interesting. And then it built on it and built on it. And one week ago, they said, we're not sure if we're ready. And we said, yes, you are ready. And now you're going to see it. Please give it up for Abdullah and Hussein. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Abdullah Al-Saidi. I'm from Syria. And here are my friend Hussein. And hello, everyone. My name is Hussein. And uh, I'm a software engineer specialized in front-end development. So we would love to uh, share our idea with you, um, Talia. Talia is our indoor climbing analytics app. When I say climbing, you imagine this. A guy climbed a big mountain. But what I mean is this. Indoor climbing, another form of a climbing, which is um, uh, uh, which is simulated the outdoor climbing, and uh, and the the indoor climbing it has a multiple wall and has multiple routes in it, and each route has a colors you have to climbing from the beginning to the end, and the route colors specify the difficulty, and the indoor climbing become a famous uh, nowadays and a cool fact that indoor climbing, and the first time in the history, become in the Olympiad and, and to, at Tokyo in 2022, in 2020. And, and as a technologist, we saw a perfect opportunity here to involve the tech in indoor climbing. And the tech now, nowadays, is everywhere. Every um, single uh, sport, you, here you can see that uh, the the you can see that the AI and computer vision involved in this tennis sport. You can see they uh, detect the ball in or out the line, and we have the uh, the app that track the 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 information and give you a valuable information. And if you want to take a look of how big the market is, you can see the funding for startups, like for North America, which is reached 6.5 billion in 2022. And if you look to Asia and Europe, we can see it's like increasing by 300% uh, and still going up. Um, so now you have a very popular sport, which is climbing. First time in the Olympics in 2022. You have a very, very domain, which is sport tech, a lot of money, a lot of cash flows. But how is the current state right now, like indoor climbing and tech sport? How is it going now? Well, let's take a look. Uh, the market leader is Vertical Life, which is a mobile app can track your bouldering progress. And its total uh, annual revenue estimate point between 5 million to 10 million. And uh, they actually, you might like guess, they are doing very good business because, okay, 
sport tech is very good. Bouldering is very good. So what we can uh, uh, imagine? A very good big business? Well, not exactly. Uh, their Google reviews is 2.3. The customers are not really satisfied. Well, wow. Um, that's because actually nowadays customers are expecting more and more advanced technologies. And they are not happy with just only a user experience of just, just uh, checking if I complete a route or not. And that actually what inspired us and motivated us to create Talia, which is a mobile app which take advantage of AI technologies and to make a climbing body for you in the gym. Um, but to start with, it was like very, not very straightforward. So we want to ask some help from very one who knows this domain very well. And we like go around and search and after a lot of progress and things, we found Ahmed. Uh, <laughs> who is like, who's like Ahmed who is like very in love and bouldering. Uh, he liked to shoot himself. Uh, he's obsessed of recording his moments. Rather it's like his wow moments or his fall downs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so Ahmed, like, he tells us, okay, I want to try Talia. Let, let me know how it works. Okay, I told you, if you want to try a route in the gym, just simply open, open Talia, go to the camera. Okay. Just open Talia, go to the camera, and our AI-based route detection will detect which route it is and we'll give you like some analytics of this route, a success rate, not only this, but we'll also give you some videos for other community members who already solved this route. So you need insights, here you go. Mm -hmm. um, not only this, since Ahmad, as you know, like he's like, he loved to just shoot himself and post it. Um, our AI service actually analyzed the video that Ahmad shoots uh, through rock segmentation and also both estimation. And we aggregate all over these kind of results to give Ahmad uh, a progress chart for him and as well a success rate chart. And not only this, we give him uh, how much time he lives during this route. So Ahmad's now all yours. <laughs> all right, so we we also we think to d like make a delightful experience to Ahmed, since Ahmed want to uh, share his success moment and failure moment. So we add uh, a feature for the app Talia Community. So Ahmed can share his success moment and as a stories, and he can uh, follow uh, his uh, climbers' bodies, and he can uh, track the rate success rate of the climber and add events with his uh, Clambers community to go together and uh, go clam. Now you are might wondering what is your business model? Is just for fun? Not really. Um, actually, uh, our main concern is the data. Data now is the new oil, as you all know. So since I am collecting data from multiple uh, climbers doing uh, jumps, doing crazy stuff, I have a very valuable database which can be, be used for taking advantage and building very much sophisticated models in the future. Not only this, I can promote building utilities through my app to the old players. So simple as this. Um, the thing is, um, our future plan is also taking advantage of this data and do much more cooler stuff through computer vision technologies to help players get more and more friendly experience. So actually, um, our mission in Talia is just only one thing, is to take that user who put 2.3 rating in the previous app and give him a pleasant experience while he's bouldering and to share some happiness with him. <laughs> So thank you so much. Uh, this is our team, uh, Abdullah and me and Judy. Um, we are software engineer and Judy as a designer. And thank you so much. <laughs> and okay.
First they thought they're not ready, then they don't want to give their microphone away anymore. You see? That's how it goes. I'm happy that we had you guys here now as well, and I'm also happy that we have our next presenter coming up. We do have two more design portfolios, and the next one is one of my personal favorites. And that is not just because of her work, but also because of her personality. And I cannot give Hisham the only credit because she was part, she was the second half of that dream team. And so together with these two students, we have spent many, many hours over this year. Mariana, it's your time to shine. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> hey mom, hey dad. Uh, well, hi everyone, I'm Mariana. I'm from Costa Rica, yes. Pura vida, everyone. I'm excited to show you my portfolio today. Uh, probably most of us designers know how much time this took us to complete. So, a lot of hours into this and I'm very proud. Um, so a little bit of an overview of what I did. I wanted to do a portfolio that will showcase my personality and the way I work. Um, so something that would be joyful, but as well professional, as that's, I, that's how I see myself, at least. So for the hero page, I wanted to include my smile, as I love to work smiling. And the ones that work with me know that. Uh, if I click on this, you'll see a short overview about me. Um, I wanted to include my pura vida that I've been trying to include during the whole year here. And as we scroll down, uh, you'll see the projects that I work with. All of them are here from Harbor Space. I'm super proud about them. Thank you for everyone that worked along me in these projects. Um, I also wanted to include small interactions, so as you can see, as I am scrolling, you'll see small animations. I wanted this to be fun, um, but also very professional, so I'll just scroll through it. Hopefully it's not lagging a lot. So these are some of my favorite projects, and at the end, of course, this section for uh, people to contact me in case they want to work with me. And the project that I want to showcase today, actually, um, this project right here called, called Breeze. I worked on this during um, a class with Cyril and Willie, with Vanessa, Avrar, Nikes, and Maya. Thank you so much, guys. It was an incredible project. Yes, they deserve it. Um, so in here, I just showcase a big overview on what the project was about. This project specifically was for how we could rethink um, the way we organize, work, and collaborate within organizations uh, after the pandemic that we were mostly doing remote work. Um, and it was a really challenging project because, um, let me scroll a bit so you can see it here, we only had a week and a half to complete this, so it was for sure a challenge. Um, to come up with a whole new project, a whole new idea, do the design, we had to test it and then iterate on it again. Um, so in here, I just tried to explain all the different steps we did. Um, so I start by the discovery where we did the research, we kind of look what was available out there. As you, uh, Here you can see my beautiful teammates. I included some of the different steps of the research about how we ideated, we all come up with ideas, we voted on our favorites. Uh, of course, we include everyone in this process. Um, and we decided on the winner that is going to be an app that will help people with burnout. That is something that in every day is becoming more and more common. So we wanted to create this tool that will allow them to take a quick test, a quick quiz, um, that will not take more than one minute, and it will tell you how stressed you are and how we can help you to alleviate those uh, symptoms. So after that, uh, of course, once we've decided the idea, we have to come up on how it will interact with the users, how the different features were going to work, and we did different exercises during this week and a half that we had. We prioritized the different features, and we came up with the flow that we were going to test. As I told you, we tested this twice. And in here you can see some of the initial designs. These are the wireframes, these are plain, no colors, because we needed to test the idea. 
And in here, fun story, Lynn, <laughs> that was here before, she was our first user test. One of the feedback was that she wouldn't use this tool. <laughs> but we changed it, we improved it, hopefully. Some, so these are some of the learnings we had from the user feedback. And in here, you can see a before and after once we applied all the colors that uh, we did with our branding. Some of the most important features we added for the second iteration and just uh, how it looks overall. And mostly my learnings are at the end, last but not least, the contact me page. So thank you so much. This is all that I have and Pura Vida everyone, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, fellow graduates, we have three more presentations before the break. The final three, and that is going to be introduced now by our very local student who has been at Harbor Space now for one year with us while actually working on his own project from before, during, and he will continue working on it afterwards because it was very successful already. And I think uh, with the input of Harbor Space, he made it even more successful. And in a second, it will appear magically behind these doors and you will be able to welcome the one and only Sergi! Well, I feel like Will Smith in pursuit of happiness. Well, I'm Sergi Roig from Barcelona, and, well, and today I will talk about my company, Staria Technologies. Everything starts in 1879, when Thomas Edison discovers one of the creators of patent inventions ever, the light bulb. It came up with a clear vision, an objective to end up with earners, but what he didn't uh, realize were the unintended consequences that this will bring. Sometimes great things come at a high price. The average electricity bill for just one point of light is more than 200 euros. That's the equivalent of a total electricity bill of a family for a month. Furthermore, this energy comes in the majority from fossil fuels, contributing to climate change. So, there's a story in Los Angeles, 1994. There was an earthquake which uh, caused a blackout, no? So people start calling 911, saying that they were seeing uh, what was apparently a great shape in the sky. But in fact, that great shape was the Milky Way. Coming back to Spain, is the country that spends more on public lighting in Europe, more than a billion euros, and that would be okay. But it's not if you're the one that casts more hours of sunshine. So, we pick some LEDs, a solar panel, and a battery to end up creating our solution, the Staria solution. So, say goodbye to electricity bill, say goodbye to expensive installations, reduce light pollution thanks to our movement sensor, and say hello to a sustainable and recyclable product. Interesting facts, it's 60% 60 cheaper than a current installation, and with 100 lights during 30 years, you will save 160 tons of CO2. That's the equivalent of a forest of 16,000 trees. Uh, the market is gonna triple up almost in the next five years. And out of these 31 billions, we aim to get in the long run 100 million. An image is worth more than a thousand words, so here's a video of how we work. Wait. 
I can promise that the definition in the computer was better. <laughs> Moving on on the competitive uh, landscape, uh, products in the left side, I know this is my right, but uh, you can see left, uh, are from China and uh, they cannot be installed in the public sector. Then we have Philips, they have like quite a good product, but it can only be installed in remote areas. So finally, we, had, uh, we have here our real competitors, Ekiona and Von Roche. In that case, our, our advantage will be focusing on a, a better uh, quality price. Our revenue streams has no secret. We are a hardware company nowadays, but we are working in uh, finishing the software, and then we will move on in the long run when we have uh, um, lights all over the city into the big data and maintenance. Our target clients could be divided in three pillars. First of all, we have the public sector. Then we have the private sector construction companies and architectures. And finally, the B2C, which will be uh, industrial companies. Our milestones are uh, these ones. First of all, we, uh, we have been uh, with this prototype with more than, uh, than a year. Then, uh, we are glad to say that we get uh, even partner in Smart Cities World Congress. And also, we get our first public lighting installation. And finally, recently, we get our pre-seed funding. That's our team. Miguel, the CEO and the one that came up with the uh, with idea, one of my best friends also. Eric Villa, uh, the inventor. Gerard, who is there actually. Gerard! <laughs> and me, the, the finance guy. Well, uh, I want to thank you, uh, my team. It's like, uh, it's like a family. Uh, it's like I have three girlfriends. And uh, <laughs> also my family that's always been there when I, when I fail and they keep pushing me forward. And uh, also to my mentor, Eric. And well, uh, that's one of our uh, prototypes. It's in 1%. I don't know if it will light up, in theory or not. But well, may the light be with you. Thank you. You see, we even build physical products here. <laughs> Amazing. So, now, second last presentation is something very special because he is today the only cybersecurity student that is actually presenting his capstone project. And it is one of our smaller, more intimate programs where we have fewer students, and that's why it's even greater that Karim over here managed to already land a job with one of our teachers. Is that right? Congratulations. Come up and tell us more about what you did. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Karim. Uh, I'm from Amman, Jordan. Uh, I'm passionate about cybersecurity and cryptocurrencies. And uh, for my capstone, I decided to uh, write a thesis about tokenizing and fractionalizing assets. So what exactly is tokenization? Uh, tokenization is the process of creating a digital representation of an asset and issuing it on the blockchain. Now, blockchain has been a new uh, uh, hype in the recent years, uh, mainly because it uh, provides uh, an easy way of transacting with people, uh, a safe way, and a transparent way. 
So uh, when I started this project, uh, I realized that there's two different asset structures that you need to take into consideration. Uh, the first being that assets that exist in the real world. So for example, a, a, a painting, a, a sports car, uh, real estate property, and other assets which are native to the blockchain, for example, uh, as you're all familiar with, uh, Bitcoin. So, uh, what exactly does tokenization bring to the, the table? So, uh, I realized that the efficiencies of blockchain and uh, with the use of uh, smart contracts, we are able to automate time-consuming processes and processes that uh, take a lot of paperwork and can cost a lot of money. Also, when you tokenize an asset, you are then able to fractionalize it, which means that you are now able to uh, divide a big asset into smaller pieces, which, uh, which in, a, in itself brings along a lot of benefits, which I'll explain further. And also, you are now uh, putting the asset on a blockchain, which operates 24-7, 365 globally. So you are opening this asset to be invested in from all over the world. So uh, tokenization is also being covered a lot by big industry leaders such as Deloitte, and they believe that tokenization could unlock trillions of dollars uh, that are currently stuck in illiquid assets uh, by making it more accessible, cheaper, faster, and easier to transact it. So there was a study from uh, Keyrock where they were estimating and analyzing uh, how much uh, would be saved from tokenizing equity and uh, trading it and how much uh, people would save uh, in the long term. So as you can see in the graph, given that adoption rates rise to around 90 to 100% by the year 2030, it's estimated that uh, there will be cost savings of up to 4.6 billion euros, which could be captured by investors themselves and uh, used to increase trading volumes. Also, fractionalizing uh, assets brings many, many benefits. Uh, the graph you can see in front of you uh, shows how many months of savings it is required uh, by uh, income classes uh, to save to uh, invest in the top five market cap companies. So as you can see, it could take people in the lower income class over 600 months of saving just to be able to purchase one share in the top five uh, market cap companies. So when you, for example, uh, tokenize a stock, uh, and then you can, you're now able to fractionalize it. So this person in the lower income uh, bracket is now being able to access uh, investing in assets that uh, cost a lot because, for example, they are able to invest just $1 into the asset rather than having to invest thousands of dollars to purchase the entire asset. Also... Uh, since you now tokenize the asset, it is now traded 24-7, uh, 365 all over the world. Uh, one of the biggest uh, or uh, most recent uh, projects was called Masterworks, where they purchased uh, very expensive paintings and tokenized them and offered fractional shares in, this, uh, uh, in these paintings. So as you can see, uh, these are the most three recent, recent uh, sales. Uh, people are able to uh, realize their gains by either waiting for masterworks to uh, sell the painting or take their shares and sell it on the secondary market to people, uh, making it very easy to transact and uh, reducing the paperwork needed, the costs, all by the efficiencies of blockchain. In my, paper, in my paper, I researched specifically more about real estate tokenization, and that itself is a a world of its own uh, due to the fact that there are many different types of regulations and many different uh, ways to approach it. So in the most simple idea, uh, you can view real estate tokenization as uh, a company uh, purchasing, the, uh, owning the, the real estate property, so for example, a piece of land, uh, and then uh, the tokenization of the equity in the company is then sold off. So you're not directly buying the property, you're more buying equity in a real estate company that holds it. Uh, I'd love to talk more, but unfortunately time constraints and this topic is 
very deep. So uh, thank you all for listening. Very, very, very cool stuff. And I guess today we all learned something about different parts. Maybe you are more design focused, more you are more tech savvy. And, and one of the ideas that we wanted to portray, portray today is really to show you our full range. That means we have one left before the break, and that is going to be finalized with a design portfolio. One of the students who has blossomed more and more and more throughout the year, he started self-taught. Sometimes I don't believe it, his work is just too good. Roger, come on stage. <laughs> Opa. <laughs> All right. To the humble guests in this house tonight, not tonight, <laughs> in the afternoon, <laughs> and also uh, those of you who are watch watching online, my name is Roger Kinoti, I'm born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya, and I was doing a master's in interaction design here at Harbour Space. So I will kick things off with my portfolio. So. I, for those who know me, I am a very simple guy, and that's what I wanted to achieve with this homepage of mine. So keeping, keeping it very simple, which I start off introducing who I am and what I like. Shortly after, a small description of the value I offer to uh, clients, who come, um, clients who come here to visit my website as well. And then following that after is some of the projects that I worked on uh, either here at Harbour Space or also cl real client projects that I worked on in the past years. And then last uh, but not least, contact details, because how else are they going to reach out? <laughs> Next, I want to talk about one of the projects that I did here at Harbour Space uh, under the guidance of Anton. Um, I don't want to talk too much in details about the project, but as a designer, it was necessary for me to show the whole process as from when, how, and I did the research, uh, doing the sketches, doing the design, and also testing. So we were doing this all over and iterating until we came to a desirable outcome at the end of uh, this project. It's a long list, so I don't think we will have to wait to get till to the end, but just know uh, this is how I tell the story of how I did the project. So, lastly, about me. <laughs> For this page, I really wanted to bring out the impression of who I am, and not as just as a designer, but just as me personally, as Roger Kinoti from Kenya. So for this one, I wanted to showcase my talent of smiling on each every single photo. <laughs> and in my personal experience, it's because clients who get to see the face of uh, the person behind the work that they see on your, uh, on your website, chances are they will likely work, uh, want to work with you. So that's why I wanted to do this. And thanks, Kamran, because he was the one who taught us to smile uh, in our first class. <laughs> Last but not least, on behalf of every student that is graduating this year, I just want to give a big thank you to Harbour Space, Svetlana especially with her team. I'd also want to um, give thanks to every single lecturer that uh, we came, uh, who taught us and we made connections with. And also, I would really want to thank uh, the student committee for this fantastic year that they have enabled us. And lastly, lastly, to close it off, I also want to give a big thank you to my family back at home. Unfortunately, they could not come here, but they say hi to everyone here. Um, sorry, sorry. Um, we've made friends, and we've made memories, and my humble request to each and every one of you is to carry these relationships into your next chapter of life. Thank you, and let's celebrate.
I couldn't do it any better. I couldn't say it any better. Amazing, Roger. Thank you for your project and for these closing words. But we are not done yet. Remember, these were just the capstone projects that we wanted to present to you. There is still the formal ceremony. We still have the actual graduation ceremony coming up, where we will ask all the students to come on stage so we can hand over their diplomas and transcripts. That means a couple of things for right now. It is almost 2.30. We are going to do a break right now until 3 o'clock, where we invite everyone downstairs to the first floor. We have drinks and food prepared for you. Very important is to be back up here at 3 o'clock. And because we have two elevators, we highly recommend that you get going a few minutes beforehand so we can actually start on time as well. Now, one more detail. Please hold on one more second. Um, our plan for the ceremony afterwards is to have all the graduates seated in the first three rows. If you have been sitting there right now and you're not a graduate, please take your stuff, move to another seat. It's free choice after the first three rows. And with that being said, thank you everyone. And let's give one more big hand to all our presenters today. Time to start. And that means we have now come to the second part of our graduation day. The second of three in the evening. I know I keep repeating it, but I'm just so excited about the party tonight. We still have something else coming up. We want to give you a decent break in between so you can go home, rest, shower, change, whatever it is. That was our plan from the beginning. Let's focus on a ceremony at this time of the day. We hope you enjoyed the buffet downstairs, ladies and gentlemen, fellow graduates. You have all found your seats. Some might actually be arriving late. They told us beforehand. So if somebody comes in, we'll welcome them as well. And then, of course, this is also perfect time to take pictures. What's going to happen now is that we will ask, in a certain order, people on stage. We will have, as the first section of today's ceremony, everyone that has finished and graduated amongst the top 15% according to their GPA. These are the honors and they will come up first. After that, we will continue in an alphabetical order until we reach the very last person that is part of our ceremony today. That is the order we have planned. Everyone, we ask you to come on stage. You see we have you left and right. If you're coming from the left hand side, please come up on a stage where we will take a picture together with Svetlana and Kamran. And then we ask you to turn around behind the screen so you're avoiding being part of the picture for that left side and for the right hand side, mirroring the procedure over there. Okay, that is our plan. And of course, afterwards, maybe if you want to take some family pictures here, that is very welcome. You can totally do so. But one thing that we want you to be aware of, because without this one particular student, nothing today would look the way it is. He has been working with us since... June, if I remember correctly, to come up with the designs and the branding that you see on our slides, on the posters, on the pictures that we have printed, that we are using as part of our YouTube stream. And that's why I want you to all put your hands together for our amazing Adrian. He's one of our graduates today, one of our amazing designers. And any final words from you? Yeah, yes. No, okay, no, sorry. Yeah, yes. Can you explain what inspired you for this Yeah, uh, so basically because uh, the brief was, there's, right now, Hebrew Space have a two campuses, like in Bangkok and in uh, Barcelona. So I just uh, got inspired by the uh, shapes of the building like from the, uh, the one that we have here and the one we have in uh, Bangkok. So that's as simple as that, actually. And yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. 
So, uh, last but not least, uh, nothing of this today would have been possible without our founder and CEO. And of course, we want to give her the stage as well to address our graduates of the class of 2022. Svetlana? Dear guests, dear graduates, it's a bittersweet moment. You, yeah, I'm sure you share this feeling. Um, you probably remember one year ago when you came, or for some of you three years ago when you came, how it felt. You know, so much had changed <laughs> for, for all of us. Um, but this moment today is bittersweet for me because you're taking a part of my heart. I really, you know, over time get attached to each one of you as we spend a lot of time together. As, uh, you know, we love, uh, we dance, <laughs> we argue, you know, to find a better solution. We collaborate, we go skiing together, we go hiking together. We explore uh, who we are in relation to you guys, right? And every year is special at Harbor Space because of you. You make it special, right? Because most of our teachers, we are very lucky at Harbor Space. And if uh, people in the audience wonder why Harbor Space is so special, it's partly, uh, you know, because the teacher cohort, the teachers that come, to Harbor Space are stable around many, many, many years. Since we began seven years ago, the teachers kept on coming, the same teachers. So they know the system, they keep the continuity, right? But what makes every year very different is a different set of students, right? Because you guys come and you start challenging the teachers, right? And uh, the teachers um, kind of play along, right? And uh, uh, this generation, I have to say, was a very special generation. A very important one because we just came out of pandemic and uh, all the previous two years were kind of not the version that we, you know, we dreamed of, right? Like to, today's graduation is more similar to what it used to be before the pandemic. Right, and this two years, it was completely not what we're used to. And it was very hard for us to express the love and, um, you know, the, sort of the engagement and um, uh, to create together when we were not in the same room, when we were separated uh, by the screens. It was really, really difficult. And I'm so happy that finally this feeling of belongingness, this feeling of love, this feeling of um, appreciation of being together in the same room kind of came back, of having parents here. Thank you very much, dear parents, for coming over to support your children. And for me, you know, students, I don't have children of my own, unfortunately. I mean, it just didn't happen to me. But, you know, of course, all of you guys are a little bit like my children, you know, and in very little way, you know, don't, you know, there's no, <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> but uh, I had a dream, you know, and this dream kind of came true. And uh, I have to, uh, I have to say that, of course, all of you, uh, you know, made, made it, made it a reality for me, right? Because you come every year, you believe in this, you know, we tell you in the beginning with Kamran, which will begin on Monday, the cycle again, <laughs> we tell you on Monday, like, guys, believe in yourself that you can become CEOs, you can become makers, you can become change makers, you can become leaders, and you kind of start to believe in that, right? Like, although in the beginning, it's, mm, you know, you're like, you know, is that a play? Is that a theater? Is that something, you know, um, they want us to believe, but it's not true. I'm not going to be a CEO, uh, you know, because I'm 24. 24, by the way, is the average age at Harbor Space, if you guys don't know. So, you know, for all of the students, the average um, race is really hard to define because we're 80 nationalities. We come from everywhere. And this year was a particularly diverse. I have to say that this year we didn't even have two people with the same name 
can you imagine? <laughs> this was really crazy. And uh, so each one of you, and I hope you in the audience could see and could feel, especially you could feel how everyone here is special. And I think that the education for the new age, for the age where you know we can have more information, should be like that, really, that you, you see people. You really see in each person a universe. And you could see it today, right? And this is amazing for me, that this is not just a number. It's, it's, a, it's a person there, right? And this, the, the person is very beautiful. And, you know, there's so much we can do. And, I mean, for me, it's really the metaphor and the topic of, um, you know, what the university of the future should look like. I mean, it's still a... Obviously, hyperspace is a prototype of the university of the future. We're still working on that, right? But, you know, you guys uh, walked with us one-seventh of the way, right? Or one-sixth of the way, because we're a little baby. Uh, hyperspace is only a seven-year-old baby, right? So it's still in the making. It's, uh, you know, entering, uh, you know, its eighth year in general. And um, it was a wonderful year of harbor space really wonderful because you made it so and i i i know you're prepared fully prepared for the uh, difficult and uh, unstable and uh, you know vuca uh, vuca world that you're going to face outside but i know for sure that that kind of world will make you just stronger because you are ready for this kind of world and you are ready to you know, go and head on, tackle it, because personally, first of all, on the emotional level, you're very strong now. And why are you strong on the emotional level? Because you guys have each other, right? I always say, if you have a, a choice to make, hundred dollars or hundred friends, always go for the hundred friends. This, this is what I want to say at the end, I guess. I don't know. I love you guys. Thank you so much for all of this. We continue because you have now heard a couple of times throughout the day already that we have a partner university. Harbor Space Barcelona was the first piece. We added a second piece recently, and that is in Bangkok in Thailand. Our partner university over there has prepared a video over the last few months, and that's something that we want to share with you right now as well. The world is changing, and so is the way we learn. Harbor Space is changing what it means to be at university. Here, you can find your passion. Encourage your exploration. And build a future that you truly love. But getting there doesn't have to be boring. Four months on a course? No way. We learn through three week sprints, so we stay focused on a single topic. Our teachers are industry leaders, entrepreneurs, designers, coders, marketers, today's change makers, and visiting professors from top universities. Here, you'll learn by doing, work on real world projects, and collaborate in teams on ideas that will shape our future. And when we're not here, we're out here. This is our city, bustling Bangkok. Oh, and did we mention our other campus? Hola, we've got another campus in sunny Barcelona, in case you want a change of scenery. So what are you waiting for? Experience two amazing cities with others from all over the world. And get a diploma and accreditation to upskill Reskill, build your startup, or scale existing ones. Build a portfolio together with your network and level up at a state of the art university for technology, entrepreneurship, and design in the heart of Bangkok. New faces you haven't seen today, but no, they are not actors. These are actual students, and that is something that we are very, very proud of. We build a lot of the stuff that we use on a daily basis in-house, ourselves. And with us, I mean, not just the staff, we are roughly 30, 40, but of course, with your help together, with the student community. Otherwise, it wouldn't be possible. 
Next up, before we go into the actual ceremony of handing over the diplomas, we have one more special guest who has joined us today. He is a very, very busy person, somebody that we feel very honored that he can join us today. He is going to lecture uh, the first module with his class Zero to Hero, and today he is our amazing guest, Cameron Elahian. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> hello. What is this? Come on, you know about my class. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Uh, okay, that's a little bit better. <laughs> so, wow. I mean, uh, remembering the class a year ago, unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> you guys are, <laughs> you guys all look so much nicer, more beautiful, more handsome, smarter. Achieved so much, and all I did was I just got one year older. <laughs> <laughs> so jealous of you. No, this is fantastic. Speaking of Bangkok, I was just in Bangkok at our Zero to Hero class in the uh, beautiful city of Bangkok, and uh, flew back home to San Francisco for a few days before coming here. Bangkok is amazing. It uh, says that the harbor space culture is global culture and we can go to top cities and build this. And uh, the spirit of humanity, cooperation, innovation is universal. Talent is everywhere. Our goal is to find them and build the bridges and get them to work with each other and create a much better planet for all of us. Right before coming here, I was invited by National Science Foundation of the United States. It's the biggest entity, provides $8.5 billion, National Science Foundation, government of the United States, to universities to promote research. I was invited to give a talk, give the keynote speech for their biannual event. It's a big honor. And guess what I talked about? I mean, imagine National <laughs> Science Foundation, every university in America gets their funding for their most advanced research about, I talk with them about Harvard Space, about the University of Future. All of these amazing PhDs, postdocs, all of their professors, 300 top professors from the United States were there. And when I was telling them what we were doing here, many of the professors raised their hand and said, can we join you? <laughs> I said, yes, you could, but we don't pay you much money. They said, that's OK. We just want to learn, go through this experience. So I said, Lana, be prepared. Many more professors are going to be interested to come. And uh, it is uh, just really has been amazing. When I met Svetlana seven years ago, I can't remember, uh, maybe even longer. And she said that she had this dream to go and create a university of future. I just uh, couldn't believe that uh, she would do it. And uh, you know, you look at her, she's so young, and she's so beautiful, and so intelligent, and you say, you really want to go and start a university? I mean, you don't hear that from young people. Uh, usually, maybe somebody gets to the age of 60 or 70, and they say, oh, I want to start a new university. But uh, University of Future should be created by the young people, for the young people who are going to change the world. Now, speaking of youth, I should also talk about the old. In 10 days, I'm invited to go to the oldest university, University of Bologna. And guess what? They have asked me to go over there and talk about innovation and University of Future and how we can actually train a whole day. In the morning is giving lectures, workshops for the whole student body. But in the afternoon, all the top professors with artificial intelligence, with robotics, with entrepreneurship, we are talking about how to bring innovation to an old, traditional, oldest university in the world. 
So we have something special in here. It ca it's capturing people's attention. And we just need to keep doing what we are doing. Proud of you guys. Every one of you has done a great job. I can't wait to hear all of your accomplishments. And one thing that uh, uh, I guess Hisham mentioned about uh, Oman and uh, the company called, uh, I guess, uh, Phase Row, we should remind you it was started by one of the first graduates of Harbor Space, actually, Abdullah al Shaxi, and uh, he came and took the From Zero to Hero class. And I never forget, uh, most of the students had great ideas about what they wanted their project to be. Abdullah was a young man. He said, I want to go and change my country. Imagine somebody having a vision like that. And a young, he was 20-something years old. He wanted to change his country. And in seven years, Abdullah has created, oh my God, he has created a, an accelerator, co-working space, venture capital fund, uh, various types of uh, incubator programs. I mean, it's amazing. Every time I go to Oman and I see he, what he has done, is getting bigger and bigger. And uh, Masood is here also, and the great supporters of <laughs> Harbor Space. So. <laughs> Our uh, community is growing all over the world, and it's so nice to go in different parts of the world and see the graduates of Harbor Space coming and uh, wanting to cooperate with you. So love you all. It's wonderful to be with you. It has been my honor and pleasure. What a class it was. It, was, uh, it gets better and better every year. Proud of every one of you. Great job. <laughs> Thank you all. We're going to ask Kamran to stay here. We're going to ask Svetlana to come on stage. And we're also going to ask Stefania to come on stage. Yes, yes. You see, it takes a lot of people to do this. <laughs> and I'm going to position myself right here. There you go. And then, step by step, we are going to announce our students. Here we go now. Before we call out the first one, uh, I would like to say one more thing in case you didn't realize. We do have some students that are not able to join us today physically, so they will be live streamed then here up on our screens. And we do have a few more students that we will hand over these diplomas, um, sort of diplomas today as well, even though you continue to study a little bit longer. We have considered everyone until December for this batch. Are we ready with the first one? Yeah. Let's go. First up, Pedro. I should say, I guess, uh, so Pedro is awarded an MBA in digital marketing, cum laude. Congratulations. <laughs> Come here. We continue with our cum laude students. Nikas. Nikos Lilis is awarded Master of Arts in Interaction Design. Congrats. Thank you very Next up, Aslan. Give it up for Aslan. Aslan Fakri from Azerbaijan is uh, 
uh, awarded Master of Arts, cum laude, in Interaction Design. Next up, we have Lynn. Lynn from Vietnam is awarded Bachelor of, of Arts, Cum Laude in Interaction Design. Congratulations. down now we continue to the top 10 percent and that is independent of the particular program your gpa was determined and the first person i would like to come up stage with a magna cum laude is Ansch. so Ansch from india okay. master of engineering magna cum laude in front-end development Come 
Marketing. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, family, staff, and graduates. This right here is the very, very, very highest GPA of the entire batch, almost with a perfect score in 15 modules, which is just insane. Big round of applause for Lukas Schaff. Number one, no? Number one! He's the number one of this batch! Number one! Number one! From the United States, Lucas is awarded MBA, summa cum laude in digital marketing. Number one! We did it, we did it. Good, fantastic. Now that we have covered the top 15%, we will continue in alphabetical order. And the first person... He's the speech, the speech. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> we are going to cover the alphabetical order, but of course we want to give him the chance to address our class as well. Come on, stay here with us. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction, um, obviously. By this point, you know, I, my name is Lucas Schaff, and it really is a honor, um, and I cannot even begin to express um, how happy I am to be giving the valedictorian speech here for the class of 2022. Uh, big round of applause for you all. Thank you so yeah. much. So before I start, I, I really want to give um, a couple of thanks before this whole thing kicks off. And, and to first, it's to the students. Um, in this room who made this year completely unforgettable. I know by now you are all probably so tired of listening to me talk, <laughs> so I promise this will be the last time and I will keep it short and sweet. Um, to the Marketing Masters crew, Susanna, Pedro, Masuki, Tarek, and Laura, again, I'm so sorry you had to put up with a year of me, but <laughs> I couldn't have done this year without you all. It really was an amazing experience. Uh, to the teachers who helped turn us all into the professionals that we have become, um, many of which I am now proud to call my friends. Uh, I know that we were pains in the ass at times, um, but as the saying goes, you have to uh, break a few eggs to make an omelet. Yeah. To Stephania, you're an amazing boss and an even better friend. Um, thank you for all the guidance and advice, even though most sometimes I didn't listen to it, to my own peril. You never led me astray. And finally, to my mom, my dad, my grandmother, and my girlfriend, and the over here. Um, <laughs> who not only made the long trip from Nevada to be here with us all today, but 18 months ago when I told them that I was going to quit my job and move halfway across the world to go to school again, uh, they didn't immediately put me in a straight jacket and throw me in a crazy house. Um, the love and support that each one of you have given me throughout this journey um, is really the only reason why I'm standing here today. Um, but on to the matter at hand. We're done. 
We finished. Uh, I keep saying it out loud, and it really hasn't felt real up until this point. But now, standing here in, in front of you all, I think it's starting to, to settle in. After getting to know each and every one of you, I know that the reasons why people come to Harbor Space are something that is unique and special to each and every person. Uh, for me, I came to Harbor Space to remind myself that I could still do this, that at 27 years old, I could quit my job, I could leave my friends and family, and I could move to the other side of the world and go to a school that I, I frankly didn't know a whole lot about. Um, but I did it. I showed up, and a year ago, I walked into orientation day, and there were other people here, and the school was real. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> Whew. You know, we all... <laughs> And so this journey, it, it began, it started um, with this exact room full of people who had no idea who each other were, and we had no idea what this year um, had in store for us. You know, we started as zeros, and we became heroes. I, I think I'm starting to understand what Cameron's class was about. It just, it took a year, but we're getting there. Um, but I had the distinct pleasure of, of not only being a student here at Harbor Space, but also working for Harbor Space in the marketing department. So needless to say, I, I basically lived in this building. Um, and my apartment, for those who don't know, is right next door. So I was really never far away. Um, this was a blessing on some days and a curse on others. But no matter what was happening that day, I had a front row seat to um, watch these graduates uh, build amazing projects, create amazing user experiences, develop world-class strategies, do so much coding, work together, cry together, fight with each other, make up with each other, but in the end, succeed. So no matter who you are here to celebrate today, each and every one of these graduates deserves more recognition than we can. So before I continue, one more round of applause for all the graduates today. We did it. Now, I said I'd keep this short and sweet, so I'm going to wrap it up and I'll leave you all with this. Um, one of my favorite philosophers, Alan Watts, once said, to have faith is to trust yourself to the water. When you swim, you don't grab and hold the water, or else you will sink and drown. Instead, you relax and you float. Now, I'm not necessarily a religious person, but I do consider myself a man of faith. I have faith in the tangible things of this life, like my family and my friends. I have faith that the sun will set today and it will return tomorrow. And in this moment right now, I have so much faith in each and every one of these graduates to achieve amazing things in this life. We treaded the waters of this past year and at times we may have swallowed a bunch of it. And again, at times it did feel like we were drowning. But in the end, we were able to relax and we found a way to succeed, to float, to become, to get here. This may be the last time that we are all gathered at Harbor Space together at the same time. But I know, in my heart, this will not be the last time that you hear these graduates' names. Although our work here may be over, the work that we have to do has really just begun. And although our paths are diverging at this moment, where it all started will always be here at Harbor Space. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2022. I could not be luckier to call you all my classmates, my friends, but more importantly, my family. Thank you so much. So good. So, so good, man. So good. You see why he is there, is, don't you? It's, it's just too good. Ladies and gentlemen, before we continue with our diplomas and transcripts, no graduation celebration would be complete without a commencement speech. And that is given this year, not by this guy, but by Susan Akbapur, who is one of our amazing teachers here at this university. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here today physically, so we are going to play it on the screen for you. It's my honor today to deliver the commencement address for this incredible student body and to welcome students, families, and faculty to graduation day at Harbor Space University. My name is Susan Akbapur a former investigative reporter from Iran turned serial tech entrepreneur and then Silicon Valley VC. 
I'm currently sitting on seven private and nonprofit boards and managing or advising multiple software development teams. I mentioned this because I truly believe none of us should feel pigeonholed in what we love or are good at today. There are tons of studies confirming that there is a science behind luck. In one study, they asked two groups of people who were calling themselves lucky and unlucky to count all the pictures in a newspaper. The lucky group finished within seconds versus the unlucky ones that spent on average two minutes to finish the task. Why? Because the lucky ones spotted a note on the second page saying, stop counting. There are X number of pictures in this newspaper. Lucky people show four characteristics that the perceived unlucky group do not. One, they are skilled at creating and noticing opportunities. Two, they listen to their intuition. Three, they create self-fulfilling prophecies and have positive attitudes. And four, they are resilient enough to transform bad luck into good. Maybe you've heard this quote by American actor Milton's Burrell, born in 1908, that if luck doesn't knock, build a door. I agree. But I also believe that the nature of luck is very different from what my generation experienced. Milton's quote sounds easier said than done when almost half of the world's population today has received a college degree and 40% across developed countries have a post-secondary degree compared to less than 8% of the U.S. population who had graduated from college in 1960 when Milton was 52 and eight years before I was born. Competition is stiff. You literally have to be the very best of the very best to get into brick and mortar schools. So today, an applying a student's questions might be more of where exactly should I build that door? During COVID-19 pandemic, only one third of undergraduate students lived on campus but the graduation rates didn't drop. Hmm. Seems like building a door to a full-time program is passe. 30% of undergraduates dropped out today from college in the US, and two in five of those students dropped out because of financial hardship. So it really didn't matter how much schools gamify the admission system and leverage yield optimization models and schemes like admission rates, early decision, early action, etc. Right. We, we can keep the students in college. The reality of opportunities facing today's students has changed, so the door should be a revolving one. One in eight of the Forbes richest billionaires in the U.S. are college dropout. What? That means that they closed the door that they had built for luck. Why? Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg both dropped out from Harvard. Steve Jobs took a calligraphy class at Reed College in Portland based on the campus poster he saw after dropping out. Maybe they found luck not in graduating from Ivy League schools, not in highest demand STEM programs, not having read hundreds of books and case studies to graduate, but in getting their hands dirty, building products and businesses that allow them to spot hidden opportunities before others. I myself went back to Stanford Graduate School of Business at age 40, when I'd already built doors to three different businesses. Maybe it's time for schools to come to their senses, expand access, and meet the students where they are. The schools should build curricular and delivery systems that match their students' realities, needs, and wishes in physical and digital worlds, and maybe even in between in the metaverse. It's so refreshing to see that Harbor Space, thanks to the vision of its Trailblazer founder, Luminary management team and world renowned advisors and faculty has crossed into the future of education in less than a decade. You both, as students and faculty, should consider yourselves the luckiest one of all time. Frankly, I don't think any faculty in the best schools around the world can feel so fulfilled knowing that one month of their time transform and retain 
already bright the students who had passed the Harvard Spaces tight admission process, but also can spur her products, solutions, and processes that impact our today's lives, world, and businesses. I call this feeding two birds with one scone. So proud of all of you and honored to be with you here as a small part of this special paradigm. Congratulations. Like the black ones in that study, it seems you all stopped counting pictures on page two. So now after her speech, we are now continuing with the diplomas and transcripts to wrap up this important event of many students' lives. Cameron, can we ask you back on stage? One student that couldn't be here today that uh, we would still like to mention is the first one, and that would be Aisha. And what we were trying to accomplish is that these students could join us online as well, but many of them just couldn't be here for personal reasons. Uh, some of them had to go to work, and some of them just wouldn't be able to be in Barcelona even. But still, let's give her a big round of applause as well. Next up here with us is Abdullah. We continue with Abhijit. Up next, Abhinash unfortunately couldn't be here with us today either. Next one would be Abrar, but she unfortunately, same thing. So the next person here with us is Adele. round of applause now for the one and only who actually helped putting this thing together today is Adrian. Was the message that if we play the music, they won't hear us online? Okay, I see. So yes. we can't put it on now. Good. Up next, Achlam.
Another person that couldn't be here today is Amna. That is why right up next on stage will be Ariel. Brenda, a student that has done two master programs with us, unfortunately wouldn't be able to be here today either. Yes, that is a shame, absolutely. She has done data science and front-end development. So right now we call up on the stage, Carls. So, we have heard from him today already. Jaeger, it's time to pick up your papers. Good, we continue with the one and only Katya Potrushko. Now, three people we want to mention, and a big hand, please, for um, three absences. Fatma, Garaf, and Giancarlo. So the next one in order is Giovanna. After Giovanna, we continue with Hisham. After Hisham, upstage, please, Hussein. Thank you. 
And after Hussein, Iman, join us here. Good. Three more absence announcements for Isra, Jordan, and Yuka. Let's give them a hand as well. And here on stage, we have next Karim. Good. Leila couldn't join us here either, but we are very, very happy that one person in the end managed to come on campus as well. Laura, please join us. Show it to the camera, show it out there to the online world so all your family and friends can actually witness this moment as well. And she has been the host, our helping hand, our organizer of tonight's event as well. So that means she is really a special person for us during the whole day and night. Now, Laurens couldn't join us here either. He is in our home country in Austria, unfortunately. Which means we continue with Manu. Good. Up next, Maria. Don't forget about the one and only who actually helped us putting all of this together today. Because without you, it wouldn't be possible. Mazen! You have no idea how valuable, how incredibly helpful he has been today. Together with Almas as part of our tech team over the past few months, he has worked, he has studied here. It wouldn't be the same without him. We continue with Mehdi.
Up next, we have, you have seen her already, Mizuki. Good. Can we ask on stage now a person that has just arrived in Barcelona literally one or two weeks ago? So far, she had to be online. Happy to have you here today. Nawal. Another bachelor student that is fi finishing this year. Unfortunately, he is on the other side of the world right now. He graduated technically already like half a year ago. Nicolas uh, is in Argentina right now. Let's give him a big hand as well. <laughs> Reham is also in Oman, couldn't join us today. So up next on stage, we want to have Robo. After Rovo, Roham and Sofia couldn't be here today with us. That means we are asking on the stage right now, Sergi. Dre is in India right now. He had to travel home a few months before, unfortunately, for personal reasons. That means right now we want to have on the stage Takuma. Fantastic. And now we continue with Tamara. So, so good to see you here as well. It wasn't certain if you would make it. Tarek, come on stage.
So, up next on stage, uh, couldn't be, unfortunately, Timothée, uh, a French student who also has graduated a while ago. We wish we, he could have been here today. Um, up next on stage, we want to have Talk to Nazar. Umaima is also in Oman right now. That means up next here on the stage, a bachelor student, and after a long time, he is now here with us, which is really, really great. Victor Ismail. Vladimir told us last minute that he wouldn't be able to join, unfortunately. He was really trying hard, but he couldn't do it. That means, as one of our final students that we want to welcome here on the stage, Yarden! Good. Almost done, but not quite yet. Can we have on the stage, please, Yuri? We have now on the stage one person that is sort of graduating, but not quite because he's still going to Bangkok afterwards. But we think it's still worth that you come on stage here. Julius. And that was it. Did we forget someone? <laughs> that was the official part. And that was the official graduation ceremony. And we hope that you will all enjoy these beautiful goodie boxes that were to put together with the help of Adrian. These scarves that are complete novelty. You're the first batch, the first class that uh, the Harbor Space to ever get a scarf as well. 
And of course, the most important part are your academic papers now that you have finished here from our university. Now, we are coming towards the end of our, of our part of our second uh, feature of this day, but it wouldn't be complete without one more speech also from Hisham. Thank you, everyone. So let me paint a picture for you guys. Picture this. You walk off the plane into a new city, not speaking the language, and you're about to start at this small university with a very unique name. Must be terrifying, right? Yet, you still take the risk. I mean, you're already here in Barcelona. A Couple of days later, you walk into the campus and you meet 60 other people who are just as intelligent and motivated and inspired as you are. So you bond over your foolishness and for the next 12 months, you learn and you grow together. To you here today on campus, and to the others joining us online, today is the day that leap of faith pays off. Today, you're graduating from Harbor Space. For many of us, this was not an easy journey. From long nights and sacrificed sleep, for students in creative programs, it was long nights working, uh, building, student pers building personas, and working on uh, financial modeling, for technical students, it was debugging code and screaming at failed CICD pipelines. On the flip side, there were also a lot of triumphs along the way that helped us and reminded us to keep pushing. From hiking Montserrat with Cameron, to learning how to ski in the span of one weekend in Andorra. A lot of students that I spoke to um, have mentioned that they've observed a lot of personal and professional growth. And an aspect that a lot of these students have mentioned was their greater understanding of the fields that they are studying and a greater um, and clearer view of their future career paths. And this would not have been possible without all the support from the professional teachers that we've had at Harbor Space over the last year. Adding to that, a lot of students also emphasized the importance of the diversity we have here at the, you know, at our, in our batch. As mentioned earlier, we have more than 30 countries represented, and this mix of backgrounds and perspectives is in its own equivalent to yet another master's degree. And finally, one cannot understate the importance or the significance of the city we're in. For a lot of us coming from developing countries, being in Spain, and being in a very multicultural city such as Barcelona over the last year, has been a great opportunity to try a lot of different foods and drinks and cultures. From Spanish classics such as gazpacho and croquetas to Latin American cuisine and mezcals on a Friday night. Before I end this, I want to extend my thanks to all the students and staff here for making this one of the best years in my very, very long academic journey. I also want to thank my family back in Oman. I know they're watching me right now. And all, the Fazero, all my Fazero team for all the support and guidance over the last year. And to all my fellow students, just remember, despite us all going in different directions and scattering literally across six continents, we will always remember the friendships we made here and all the memories we made in Barcelona will forever live in our hearts. Thank you. The Student Trajectory Award couldn't be more deserved. Uh, it is something that is always given out to one person throughout the year, not only for academic reasons, but just for the influence they had over the last 12 months. So we have, again, with his help and several other people, put together a surprise under the leadership of Almas, who is also our main tech guy today. Uh, which has him caused many, many sleepless nights now in the last few days. Something that we should all experience towards the end of our ceremony. This is your official graduation video.
Remember orientation day, when none of us knew one another. A group of students from every corner of the globe, 35 countries to be specific, all gathered on the sixth floor. Hungry for knowledge and ready to face the challenges ahead. Who would have guessed how far we would come? So, let's look back on this last year. Let's look at the good, the bad, and of course the ugly. I would never forget the hours that I spent uh, pulling the all-nighters during the final two days for Diego's branding class. We worked on our ideas so hard that we can do our startup pitches from sleep now. I'll never forget the endless group presentations on the countless fake marketing campaigns that we built. The time spent and the time we will spend waiting for the CI and CD test to pass. Hours waiting for a model to train and then getting an accuracy less than 50%. When I finished my Irene's presentation, the final one, I had like this moment of relief. It felt unreal almost. But it wasn't always about school. It was the fun moments between classes, modules, presentations, and projects that made our time at Harbor Space something that we will never forget. For me, it was being part of the International Women's Month, helping organize events, debates, and campaigns to break the bias of women in tech. The pitches that we're preparing were super stressful and not easy but the snacks and the drinks after each module were worth it. I mean, for 12 walks, Alfred opened so many doors for us. We've been to places I don't think locals go to, and we met people that are so exclusive, uh, and they gave attention, full attention for us. The most substantial part for me was the wine tasting, where we tasted some full-bodied flamboyant wines. Friendsgiving and Halloween was a total success. We ate a lot, we had a lot of fun, despite Ariel getting kicked out from the club. What? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I miss playing uh, Harbor Space football on the weekends. Let's also remember all the challenging hikes we did while some of us were hungover, others were fasting. Yet, we survived them all. Uh, yeah, we have so many funny trips. I wish we could do more. Andorra trip was, was crazy. <laughs> I look like a construction worker. <laughs> People got thrown off buses, or so I've heard. We lost teeth, wallets, people. Ah, but we found friendship. And all the parties and birthdays celebrated at the beach. We came from different places, cultures, and backgrounds, but what we found was a place to call home. No matter which program we are graduating from, no matter how hard this journey was, this was just the beginning of the rest of our lives. The beginning of a new adventure. And no matter how challenging the road ahead may be, the lessons we learned, the friends we made along the way, and the experiences we had here at Harbor Space in this amazing city of Barcelona will forever be our guiding star to success. Our work space is innovation and unconventional teaching. A place to grow. The best place to learn from professionals and get real friendships. Family, fun, and work. Multicultural. Making lifelong friends. Passion, creativity, and experience. Adventure. Cool stuff happening every day. Challenging but fun. My life. The new experience. It's a place where you push your abilities to the limit. Diversity, caring, sharing. 
Ignoration. Uh, soft purple. Harbor Space for me is the place where you learn something new every day. Amazing. <laughs> Feel for your ambition. A great opportunity to meet a lot of great people. That is like expanding your ideas and your mind. For me, it's perfect place. <laughs> really nice to be here. Test of your limits. So Harbor Space is an experience that will change your life. Anything We're almost done. We, we are Harbor Space. Come. Almas and Mazen, our two amazing tech guys. Yeah, I think they are right. Come up front here. Come on the stage. Mazen, you too. I, I have one big question for you. How many Red Bull did you drink last week? No, um, I know I know maybe at least seven. At least seven. seven. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it wouldn't. <laughs> you you see how many hands come together to to make this happen, and and you see today a lot of us staff because we really celebrate our community. And you're staying anyway. What are you? <laughs> it's it's been really really special, guys. Um, today is just the final day, but we all know that this is just one out of so many days that we've spent together now. Um, Let's not waste any tears. There is one more thing that's, that's, that's going to happen as a little surprise. I'm going to ask Gio and Narissa on the stage. I think they have something prepared for us. If you hire me, I need a job. Well, it has been a long, long day. And I still don't want it to end. I guess everyone is feeling the same. So, <laughs> dearest parents, brothers, sisters, friends, and our beloved ones. I hope at the end of today, you call us as your extended family. This journey began not only because we wanted to travel the world to find ourselves a place to sleep in. It's more than that. We feel very connected to people we see every day here. And I'm curious if we can keep in touch and take care of each other like every day in the past year. In the past year. In the past year, we felt like traveling the world, just learning about our friends and their experience back in their home country. Robo taught us how to drink slipka or lifka, 
like a professional Slovakian. <laughs> Where's Sergi? All right, yeah. Sergi gave us tips on how to drive to Spanish highways. A little bit left, where we want to go on the light, on the right. <laughs> and wait for a Kiwi is actually a queue. <laughs> Jo was always bluffing everyone over her famous mezcal. I bought Thailand to Barcelona in critique Bangkok restaurants, and that became our second home for more than six months. Manu showed us how to bullshit our Japanese professor. <laughs> and to appreciate African diamonds in a real way, because he's a gem in the class. And how Rollins taught us to improvise his speech perfectly. Unless like he's not here. <laughs> this is our perspective from an entrepreneur point of view, but titles. As nationalities became blurry, we became a community that helped each other in studying and living abroad together. More than that, we became a giant family where we find ourselves, our soulmates, like Vanessa and Matisse, <laughs> our best friends, our Habibi gangs, <laughs> our next co-founder, or sometimes we wanted to work in the new, with someone we wanted to work with in the near future. And last but not least, we found Minin. <laughs> For us, Harbor Space meant trying new things and letting us go of the old habits, learning how to ski in Andorra and getting drunk afterwards. Rinse and repeat and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> learning how to live with 100 euros for a few weeks. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> learning how to win poker over our professional professor who's way better than us forgetting the comfort of our homes to shape a new chapter of our life, finding that we are actually good at something or not, exploring design because our classmates made everything look so beautiful, or trying to understand pythons, enroll the class, then dropping out because it's too advanced for some of us, <laughs> or realizing that actually the brightest guy in the finance class was an 18 years old that was studying computer science. <laughs> we all know who it is. <laughs> but this year was a challenge in every way. We can imagine. But we finally did it. We can finally call ourselves masters in design, entrepreneurship, digital marketing, computer and data science, and cybersecurity and fintech. But does that even exist? <laughs> and today is not the end. It's just the beginning of a new adventure. Where we now have more than 60 homes brushing for the rest of our lives. We want to thank each one of you who bear with us and has heard for, about Jess Chef for our, <laughs> for our year now. <laughs> and to teach us how to pronounce it correctly even though we can't. <laughs> Harbor Space for being our home, for letting us grow, to prepare us for what's next, and an honorific mention to Angela, who not only had to bear with a war in her country, but for letting us use the kitchen as our private bar. And for cleaning every day our mess. To Svetlana for providing us an amazing place where we find our brother or a sister from another family. To Eric, who taught us that we shouldn't mix different grains in alcohol, so remember to stick to grapes and forget the beer. <laughs> as well to all of our professors who try to understand and make sure our imagination makes sense. Another honorific mention to this beautiful lady. <laughs> Steph, because she was not only part of the Minion Gang, 
She was the coolest one. We all needed a have a space. And to all of our parents and relatives that supported us, helped us, and fly all the way back to sunny Barcelona to share this moment with us. Lastly, we all have dreams, and right now we have full energy striving to achieve them. We wish every one of, of you to remind ourselves to keep going with our dreams and keep in touch with the people we, we have met here, because I am very sure that each one of us will be 100 supportive. It has been a full day of reminding you about how it was like last year. Nari and me started and ended this ah, and ended <laughs> and ended this day. And we hope you know how excited we are to give this speech for everyone. Congratulations. We'll always be the class of two, 2022, the year full the year full of the rising stars, and let's celebrate with Ms. Gal! to my mom and Vico. Yay! And to everyone. <laughs> so I know I've said a few times already we're close to the end. Now it's really the end. Uh, this is the official closing of our ceremony. There is only one or two more little logistical details I want to tell you about tonight. We are going to be around here on campus for a little bit longer, but it is approaching 5 o'clock right now. We went a little bit uh, overboard with time, as always, right? Um, but I guess no day is more worth it than this day, guys. So that means at 8 o'clock, the doors open at our graduation party place, which is the Skyfall Rooftop Bar. Everything's ready over there, or at least we are in preparation. I mean, we're still here, right? Um, and then at 8 o'clock, the doors open. We'll have some kava available. Guess who selected the kava? <laughs> we'll have a welcome drink. And at 9 o'clock then, guys, uh, the, the open bar and the dinner, the cocktail dinner starts for two hours over there. And then we'll have the place until 5 o'clock, until the very end, with live music all the way through. That means we'll see you guys later. And as a very last detail, I would like to ask all the staff members on the stage so you actually see the ones that work behind the scenes. And first and foremost, a big hand for Stefania. Without her, it wouldn't have been possible all the way through until tonight. And now everyone else as well. Javier. And if one could take a picture, that would be amazing.
This is it. You are free to go. Thank you all for being here today. And of course, we would like to take one more big group picture of all graduates. So gather around here as well. All graduates on the stage.